This is the Buzz Adams Morning Show Podcast. Barstool Talk Daily. Except it's really early in the morning and no booze. For the most part. so much. What a busy show we're going to have today. Uh, we've got a lot of guests coming in. Good morning, Joanna. Good morning. Oh, oh my. your Halloween sweater again. Yes, it's a bit chilly today. Oh, yeah. Today. Oh, that looks like it would come in really handy. Uh, we've got a lot of guests coming in. Uh, one of the candidates for district attorney, Democrat James Montoya, is going to come in later on the show. Uh, incumbent District Attorney Bill Hicks is going to come in tomorrow on Friday. Cool. Uh, Sheriff's Department coming in today. Talk about a some events they have going on, some Halloween or October fun uh, with the Sheriff's Department. And uh, the great comedian Carlos Mencia will be here later as well today. Woo! What a show. That's not all. I'm just getting started. <laughs> There's a really really funny, smart podcaster named Akila Hughes. Uh, she had a podcast that was really popular called What a Day. And she's doing a she's doing a, a mini podcast, a few episodes of a podcast called Rebel Spirit. So it's her going back to her hometown in Kentucky to try and get them to change the mascot from a, a rebel. So like a big plushy Guy in a uh, like a Kentucky like a uh, oh crud, uh, Confederate general costume. She wants him oh. to change it to the biscuits because <laughs> she biscuits. says there's nothing more southern than biscuits, and everybody loves biscuits. Yeah, who's gonna root against that? So Akila Hughes going to be coming in to talk about her podcast, her, uh, rather her podcast, Rebel Spirit. It's really interesting. We get to the uh, weather real quick here. It, it has not changed much, but we're close enough to the weekend. I'm going to give you the golfer's forecast. And the next few days, I, I'll tell you, look really, really uh, great. <laughs> no rain in the forecast. Not through the weekend. It doesn't look like there's any rain for the next several days. Uh, sunny today, 92 for the high temperature. Most of our highs in the afternoons are going to be in the upper 80s or low 90s or around 90. Yeah. Uh, Push, play, and repeat, because that is uh, what it's going to be for the next uh, several days. And winds are light, too. So if you're looking to do some outdoor activity, picnicking, golf, for instance, beautiful day for all of that stuff. Uh, a beautiful week and weekend. A+. plus. The Golfer's Forecast is brought to you by Painted Dunes Desert Golf Course. You can set up all your tee times and reservations online at PaintedDunes.com. That's PaintedDunes.com. Or call them at the Pro Shop. Their number is 915-821-2122 for Painted Dunes Desert Golf Course. Well, Joanna, how was mm -hmm. your day yesterday? Did you do much? Not much. Costume all ready for the Halloween parade? <gasps> Almost. Uh-huh. You just need a... I was I'm thinking about... i finishing touches. My costume is very elaborate, but this year it's going to be super easy to get in and out of. Oh, uh, you, yeah. Yours is all comfy. Like, sometimes I have I have a lot of makeup on and multiple layers. <laughs> and, well, I, you know, it is going to be a little warm, probably. But, yeah, probably. But I'm... 
it'll be easy to slip in and out of. Yeah, yours looks comfy. <sighs> yeah, but what if it's 90 degrees out oh, there on man, Halloween? Because it could suck. be. I'm going to be wearing flowers. Yeah, right. uh, the KLAQ Halloween Parade is coming up a week from, right? Yes. A week from today? A week from One today. One week from today, Halloween Parade is happening, August uh, October 31st. And it's going to be at Album Park. So you can sign up there on site, but you can sign up early as well. Uh, if you want details and information, go to klaq.com. Open the KLAQ mobile app. They'll have a lot of information uh, for you about the parade. Enter in uh, our categories. You can enter in the rock and drive category, decorate your vehicle, and uh, include KLAQ somewhere on the vehicle. Uh, represent your workplace. Come with your uh, coworkers in the business category. You can win cash and prizes and trophies. Uh, also, walkers are welcome. So if you're uh, really proud of your parade, uh, really proud of your costume, you want to show it off at a parade, that's what the KLAQ Halloween Parade is all about. One Source Federal Credit Union and Flower Life Essentials present the KLAQ Halloween Parade coming up a week from today. Registration forms, rules, and the parade route map can all be found at KLAQ.com. Joanna's going to have the Hollywood Cheese May. What's coming up in the Cheese May today, Joanna? Oh, it's almost that time for Hallmark to start playing all those corny Christmas movies that they do that I also can't stop watching. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but now Hallmark has been hit with an age discrimination <laughs> lawsuit <laughs> after an executive... Hey, nobody under 80 can watch these. <laughs> after an executive allegedly said that actresses like Holly Robinson, Pete, and Lacey Chaber were too old or needed to be replaced. Well, I haven't seen Holly Robinson Pete in a long time. I, but I've seen Lacey Chabert promoting... Is she's, it Chabert? Uh, Ch Charbet, Ch Chabert, Ch I don't know. She's the hottest one out of all the mean girls, I think. <laughs> Gretchen <laughs> For Wiener. my money. I'm yeah, just going to call Gretchen Wiener. Gretchen Wiener, Gretchen Wiener Gretchen was Wiener's the hottest. Gretchen Wiener is like 42. Holly Robinson Pete is 60. And the How? executive was saying, oh, they're too old to be in these Hallmark movies that we do. <laughs> Yeah, do a little more audience research. I think you'll find that uh, you could probably start putting 60 and 70 and 80 year old people on there. And, <laughs> and it'll still be it. Yeah, people will still, still watch it. I'll let you know about the lawsuit in entertainment. And news. you'll, uh, yesterday, you were, you were, we got so busy yesterday, we never got to your Hollywood report, but you were going to talk about a new uh, endorsement from uh, uh, a music act for one of the presidential candidates. You remember I that story? Was. Yes, and I have audio for that if you yeah. want to hear that today. Yeah, let's include that one because okay. you know, it's an important endorsement. It is. Um, well, I kind of figured Nico would be here. Uh, oh, you know, he showed up one time yesterday. The, uh, no. We got a text from no. him that oh, says, boy. hey, I'm running late. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At least he texted us. See, here's the thing, yeah. and I hope, I hope he's not listening. Don't anybody tell him. He's really like, hey, all day long, he's like, hey, do you like that? I got here, I got here right before six o'clock. I get here right before six. I don't yeah, think he comprehends. You need to do that a thousand days in a row, and then you can be late one day. Yeah, but did you not notice what happened when he got here on time yesterday? He was in a weird mood, and he all just kind of like. were in a weird mood no, over there, man. so. No, man, I was in a good mood. <laughs> you were in a good mood? <laughs> to start off with. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe he does need those extra 10 minutes. Hey, uh, let me tell you about Loudwire Nights tonight because we have a special guest. Johnny Hawkins of Nothing More is going to be our guest on Loudwire Nights. Talking about the band's collab with Dave Draymond. Uh, happy anniversary to Smashing Pumpkins' great album, Melancholy in the Infinite Sadness. And uh, we'll be playing some uh, tracks off that album. Another album having an anniversary. Lincoln Park's Hybrid Theory. So we'll include some of the great tracks off of Hybrid Theory. That's all tonight on Loudwire Nights. KLAQ rocks the borderland. 7 to midnight Monday through Friday with Loudwire Nights on 95.5 KLAQ. Uh, just reviewing a few of the things that are uh, going on. Uh, a passenger fell off the T Taylor Swift theme cruise. <gasps> See? I told you, you, some people couldn't stand it for six days in a row. <laughs> 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 I 
uh, Aaron Rodgers, quarterback for the New York Jets, is addressing the booger eating issue that has the sports world ablaze. Did yeah, yeah. Aaron Rodgers eat a booger? Uh, we will hear directly from Aaron uh, Aaron Rodgers coming up. Are we going to believe what a booger eater says? Have you seen what he said yet? No. Well, maybe he's like, yeah, I eat boogers all the time. It's just part of my pregame ritual. Yeah, that <laughs> sounds like something he was saying. That's not what yeah. he said. <laughs> This was fast, or at least this seems fast to me. Okay. The, AB News, the ABC News special, Liam Payne's Final mm. Days, hits Hulu today. It's already there. This morning, the Oh, it was already Hulu, on this morning? Because I watched the news on Hulu live. And, <laughs> and it's there, and I thought, oh my God, that was way too fast. Uh, also, if, if you are a, if you vaped, you might have gotten a huge windfall of cash because of a class action, action settlement uh, settled by Jewel, the maker of uh, the Jewel vapes. Okay. Um, a lot of people were not even expecting, but a payment came through Venmo for lots of people. Uh, let's see how much money. Uh-huh. Uh, it's a pretty good chunk of money. Jewel settled for $300 million to be paid out in damages for not being honest about how addictive and unsafe uh, their products were. Do you remember when we would run commercials and it was like, this is the safe and effective alternative alternative to quit to smoking cigarettes. Like, do this to help quit. It was like, I even remember back then and what would that be, 2009 or 10? Saying, yeah, man. (laughs) A little sus about it. Yeah, something a little sus about it. Uh, the class action lawsuit was uh, that we're talking about here was settled in 2022. So some most people forgot all about it until payments started just showing up in their Venmo, mm-hmm. including get this: one person on Reddit show, uh, showed a picture after Jewel Venmoed them nine thousand two hundred and seventeen dollars. So not bad. Wow. Uh, that is not typical. Uh, other people have posted screenshots, and you know you, you see some three thousands, two thousands in there. But uh, I guess you, somehow you got to prove that you how much you spent on on Jewel vapes. I mean, I guess there's there are people out there that keep every receipt of everything they've ever bought in a store uh, over time. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, three hundred million dollars uh, being if you got Venmo, it might just be coming to your Venmo. Uh, to uh, vape vape users. All right, we got a lot uh, coming up on the show today. A lot of guests. Carlos Mencia, who's at the El Paso Comic Strip starting tonight, uh, is going to be in today. And uh, we're going to have today in sound clips coming up here in just a few moments. The Daily Calendar. Today, October 24th. It's National Bologna Day. Shout out to Oscar Mayer for the Americanized version of Mortadella. It's Kangaroo Awareness Day. They have a pouch. They could fill it with bologna. It's National Food Day. Jamaican Jerk Day for that yummy, tasty seasoning and grilling. Jamaican me crazy. Yeah, and it's Fat Appreciation Week and it ends on Halloween. I'm Batman. And that's your Daily Calendar. I love the morning show. Buzz Adams in the morning. You know, I, I'll listen to the music later on. I listen to the morning show to hear you. Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org. Broadcasting in El Paso to El Paso. The Buzz Adams Morning Show on 95.5 KLAQ. Got uh, today in sound clips coming up in just a few moments. Get to all of the day's news actualities and sound bites. That's all coming up here in just a few minutes. Uh, got a couple of phone calls early. Do you want to hear a couple of them? Yeah. All right. Let me remind you of the number. Uh, you can call the neckline anytime now. That's that. You can record a message for us. And a lot of people prefer to do it that way. And it seems like it works out pretty good. Uh, so if you don't want to call us live, you can always call the Neckline anytime and leave a message. That number is 844-805-NECK. 844-805-6325. And the Neckline number. Or you can call us directly at the studio. And that number is 
415-910-4995. And uh, let's see what we got waiting for us this morning. All right. Good morning, morning show. Hey, Joanna, a uh, quick question. Did, did you hear about that Jamie Foxx thing where it says that he was recording at one of P. Diddy's, P. Diddy's free cops, and then because they asked him to stop recording and he didn't, they drugged him and then they beat his ass, and that's why he was in the hospital, I think this year or last year. Uh, I don't know. I heard the, I barely saw the TikToks about it yesterday, and I heard the interview about it, but... I wanted to come to a reliable source about it. Maybe you would have it on the cheese man or something. Uh-huh. Let me know. All right, guys. Have a good day. Joanna, had you heard about this? I had not. This, no, I guess I didn't see the TikTok. This is a this <laughs> this is a real deal. What he was saying, and I thought, okay, uh-huh. wait a second. I need to I need to fact check this one. It is being reported, and Jamie Foxx said he alleges that Diddy drugged him. <gasps> leading to his stroke and those were all those mysterious health concerns from that's why he doesn't talk about it was it earlier this year or god i think it was been like, going on it's been going on since like late last year maybe uh and it's also going to be on his netflix comedy special jamie fox has a special oh, really? coming out called what what had really happened was and the academy award-winning actor makes the startling claim that Sean Diddy Combs was behind the stroke he suffered a year ago. Fox. Dang. What? Yeah, I know. It sounded so crazy. It's like, there's no way this could be. And then I look it up. It's like, oh, wait, there's something here. <laughs> really? Something here. <gasps> he is oh, the, my God, that's so crazy. Uh, so this uh, special has been filmed across uh, various venues it goes into detail about what transpired. Hopefully, he'll talk about that Jerry Jones uh, video where Jerry Jones is talking about the, the size of the player's penises because that one was a mysterious thing. To, mm-hmm. Did you ever hear about that? Okay, No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Jamie Foxx, and for some reason, he's recording. Oh, no, he must be live streaming or whatever because he's sitting there talking to Jerry Jones, and Jerry Jones is like, yeah, he's uh, 6'2", uh, 285 pounds, runs a 4.5, 40-yard dash. And his pe- his pecker's about nine inches long. <laughs> oh and then immediately, Jamie Foxx stops recording or stops. You n- you never heard that or saw it? <laughs> no. But it's weird he knows the stats, like their running time and their dong size. <laughs> he knows all the important numbers. Yeah. According uh, to the report, Fox alleges that he was dr- drugged by Diddy. Or, you know, somebody did it for Diddy. Uh, he made the comment, fans began to laugh, assuming it was a joke, but he makes it clear in the special. He's not joking. Wow. He was drugged at a Diddy freak a out freak park. off. Yeah. <gasps> oh, my God. Says here that Jamie Foxx and Diddy were once close friends, known for their extravagant parties in Los Angeles, but their friendship allegedly soured over a failed business deal. Ooh. So... Wow. And, you know, a drugging. Oh, uh, yeah. It looks like we this all, is a legit, uh, we, uh, it's being reported multiple damn. sources. So we, we also don't know what happened to Jamie Foxx. Was it a stroke? Was it a, uh, a heart attack? Was it uh, allegedly a stroke brought on by being drugged at Diddy's freak off? I didn't see anything here. So the caller also mentioned that he got he got beat down. I, oh, right. I, I didn't see anything about that, that. But, I you know, I haven't gone in depth on it. So. Uh, thanks for the call. Thanks yeah, for the heads thanks up. Thanks for that info. Hey, so Carlos Benzi is going to be coming by later. He is. And is he performing starting tonight at the he, comic strip? He is. Okay, good. So am I. Uh, you're the opener. I am the opener. So it is tradition. Carlos is not That's is tradition. not a huge name dropper. You know no. what I mean? But well, occasionally no. I know that he sometimes hangs out with A list celebrities like Pitbull. Yes. You know. I'm, I need to ask him if he'd ever been to a uh, to a free cop. A free oh yeah, before. you shouldn't. You know, is there any chance he could have gone to a free cop with P Diddy? Also, I, think I could probably ask Deron Carter the same question. Deron <laughs> Carter, <laughs> the party starter. Um, I know that Carlos's neighbors are super famous, and he talks about like his kids going to school with I don't know. Um, uh, oh, he Gw- did Gwyneth Paltrow's kids, or yeah. 
Do you remember who Jan- Janice? I can't remember who, but he did say that his kids go with someone's famous kids. How could you, have you ever not been able to find your keys in the morning? Who me? Yeah, then. Well, sure. Joanna, I, I mean, it's not as relevant, I guess, <laughs> to you because you don't you don't drive as often. Did you not find your keys this morning? I couldn't find them anywhere. <laughs> I, I couldn't find guys, them anywhere. Okay, and I then, just want to say I got both of you guys tiles tiles to put on your keys. Or, you didn't get me a tile. Didn't you get uh, everybody? You know, no, I got. I don't know what I got tiles for. But you everybody. definitely got some for Nico. I got you a Roomba though, so that's yes, good. Yes, you did. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Guess where the keys were? Uh, In your pocket for the pants you were wearing the night before. Nope, I would have checked that Cause immediately. I, I, right, because that's where they end yeah. up for In me the a lot of times. Nope. In the refrigerator, I've done that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've been like, huh, I wonder what's in here. And then I'm looking all high and low, and it's like, there are my keys sitting on the third shelf of the that's refrigerator. That's a Lunesta thing. In the car. <laughs> oh, they were already in the car before you. In the car. <laughs> oh, I did that at a wedding I went to recently. It was time to leave, and it was like, man, where are my keys? They were in the car. They were in the car, right. The whole time? Yeah. Somebody had taken it Fer- Ferris Bueller style. <laughs> Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, this is the guy that called in yesterday that was uh, bamboozled by the uh, questionnaires. I mean, well, the proposals and <laughs> some of the stuff that you guys were explaining yesterday. Uh, I, you know, especially the ones where you say you're for, you're for it, you're you mean yes, and you're against, and uh, no, no, it's just it was some of it was confusing. But I mean, I wish I would have known a little bit more what you guys were talking about. I would have said. Instead of just writing no to everything, uh, I would have put some yes to some stuff and not feel bad. <laughs> but, you know, it's a good thing you guys are talking about it so more people are informed. Thank you, guys. You know, have a good day. And everybody, please vote. Vote. Yeah, so this is our, our uh, uh, caller from yesterday who said he went out and voted. And then there were all these props on him. He didn't know what they were or mm-hmm. what they meant or how much they were going to cost. We said this yesterday when we were talking about this. I think they intentionally make it that impenetrable, that opaque, to to encourage fewer people to vote. We don't want people to make informed decisions. <laughs> I, I mean, they even had to come out with a clarification on one of the uh, questions. Justin Underwood pointed this out to us yesterday. I think it's Prop A. It reads in such a way that people would vote for the, you know, really a turkey shoot. Anything could happen. (laughs) And it's just really weird the way they put some of these prop uh, positions, propositions on uh, the ballot. Were you about to try and explain Prop A again, but then realized that? I don't remember. (laughs) All of it is so. If we started, we might just end up confusing people more. It causes my head to swim when I even think about it. But yeah, you can vote. You don't have to fill out everything. If you don't have a favorite for a certain race, even if it's an option to vote for them, I would say abstain. And maybe there are enough people out there who, who do have an informed position. Let them carry the day. That's what I was trying to say yesterday, man. You got that right? Yeah. All right. Uh, you ready to get into today in sound clips? Yeah. Do the sound clips thing for me because for do, some do, do, do. No. 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 And no. now. And now, today, today in sound clips. Good job, Good job guys. Uh, the U.S. has confirmed that North Korean troops have been sent to Russia. About 3,000 North Korean troops are in Russia... What are they doing? Training to fight in Ukraine? They're training right now. Here is Secretary of Defense General Lloyd Austin confirming yesterday that North Korean troops are in Russia. To participate in this war on, on uh, oh, Russia's back. Let me back. I missed a first if syllable. If their intention is to participate in this war on, on uh, Russia's behalf, uh, that is a very, very serious uh, issue. More on the... Uh, North Korean troops, uh, and once again, this is Lloyd Austin, the uh, defense secretary. Uh, he, they don't know what they're there doing specifically, but it sounds like they have a few ideas. What exactly they're doing, uh, left to be seen. These are things that we need to sort out. I'm going to stay on this one here for a few seconds because well, we've got... Uh, White House National Security Advisor John Kirby. Uh, what is uh, going to be really interesting is that South Korea is not lying down watching them do this, that they are starting to uh, consider sending military equipment and maybe even troops to Ukraine. 
Right. Uh, here is John Kirby. We don't know if these soldiers are going to go into combat alongside the Russian military. We do not yet know whether these soldiers will en enter into combat alongside the Russian military. But this is a certain, certainly a highly concerning probability. Kirby also said that you should take this as a sign of weakness, not a sign of strength from the Russians. If North Korean soldiers do enter into combat, this development would demonstrate Russia's growing desperation in its war against Ukraine. Russia is suffering extraordinary casualties on the battlefield every single day. But President Putin appears intent on continuing this war. A little more here. So confirm that about 3,000 North Korean troops are in Russia. John Kirby said that to farm out uh, your fighting to a foreign country speaks volumes about how dire the situation is for Vladimir Putin. That he has to farm out the fighting to a foreign country, I think, speaks volumes um, about how much his military is suffering and, and how uncertain he believes, how untenable he believes his, his situation is. All right. And uh, here is uh, tr uh, Donald Trump, who was at a Georgia town hall yesterday. It's going to be a big one. I think it's the most important election in the history of our country. I really believe that. I agree 100 percent with Donald Trump. <laughs> and I think it's the most important election uh, definitely in, in anybody alive's lifetime. And just to reiterate, the Atlantic article was not debunked. Anybody? I keep seeing people trying well, to write you, that. Well, you say it, apparently the, the family members of poor Vanessa Guillen uh, are beholden to Trump. I... I they worked like in the see, room, though, when they, they... When the comments were allegedly made, and uh, the editor for The Atlantic says that he has a number of, of verified, confirmed sources who were definitely in the room. Uh, the family of Vanessa Guillen, not in the room. The lawyer for the family of Vanessa Guillen, not in the room. Show me any kind of evidence with, uh, with a post date that Trump ever paid anything for Vanessa's funeral. Right. I mean, that would kind of put it to bed. It's like, oh, yeah, he covered the entire thing. Yeah, it still doesn't say whether or not he called her an F, you know, it cost $60,000 to bury an F Mexican. Mexican. But it sounds like Donald Trump. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, he's kind of brought this on himself. So w w do I believe all these other sources in the room? Kind of, yeah. you know, because I get lied to by Donald Trump every day, e multiple times a day. For the last nine years. Aaron Rodgers wants to clarify something following the Jets-Steelers game on Sunday. He wants to clarify that he is not a booger eater and has <laughs> never been an eater of boogers. Aaron Rodgers was on the Pat McAfee show. He says the video is, uh, is pretty damning, though. I've actually never eaten my boogers. That's one thing I'm never. very proud of. It's a tough look to try and defend because that video <laughs> is a little incriminating. Yeah. But I can tell you that there needs to be a side view that shows that there wasn't a boog that actually went in the mouth. Yeah, it's a bad look. <laughs> it's bad. He it's admits it's a bad look. All right. Uh, let's see. Where do I want to go? I have so many options here. God, you really went overboard with the guest. I mean, it's a good thing. We got a lot of guests today. Yeah, we have some Including videos. Carlos Mencia. And who, the sheriff's office, having uh, like a fun run or something? A fun run fall festival this weekend. Why, uh, you, wearing a, why are you wearing a tie? Why not? I'm a nice look, I'm looking person. I mean, you're already late. You you decide to take an extra five minutes to put a tie on? Hello. Okay. Actually, it was already around the shirt from last night. <laughs> <laughs> I've pulled that move before. <laughs> uh, got audio here of passengers on a Spirit Airlines flight who freak out when they saw a rat above an overhead bin. The passengers even called it a super rat because of how sheer, sheerly huge it was. Uh, this was on a flight from Dallas to Los Angeles on Spirit. Listen as passengers see the super rat. Do you get freaked out by rats? No. Only if they're running right around my feet. Like if I see one on the subway from a distance or something. It's because they're so fast. Yeah, it's but like it's when they started. dart out. Like yeah. they're in your house. Ooh, what if they ran across your foot? Ugh. I don't that mind happened them. one time. And you don't then mind junior, them? Mm -hmm. 
God, hey, get just to work. Just grabbed it. Good. With his, his paw. I think that was more scary. He just went back. He just went, Kapa. Did he eat it? He put it in his mouth, and I was like, oh, Junior, I give you kisses. <laughs> Did you have to take it from his mouth? Well, he played with it a bit. Yeah. And then it died. Yeah. And Let, then Junior what, was really sad about it. That, that, hey, my toy! He's all like, it doesn't play with me anymore. Mm -hmm. You killed it, so. Uh, the cockroaches, though. The girlfriend oh. of Zach Bryan, the country artist, is named Brianna Chicken Fry. And I told you I was going to get to the bottom of this. Because Did you get to the bottom of it? Yes. Chicken Fry is not her birth name. It's it's a nickname. I thought it could be like a Native American name because I, I had friends like... Oh. You know the the beavers and uh, the barefoots and tar waters and things like that. So uh, Brianna Chicken Fry La Pag Paglia just split up. They've been dating about a year, and she says that she saw it on social media first. So here is uh, Brianna Chicken Fry. I guess she's on that uh, Barstool Talk, Barstool Sports, whatever it is. Network. That Barstool Network. I guess she's on there, and that's her uh, her nickname. I'm not, probably not going to post this for a little while, but I just woke up to um, Zach posting on his Instagram that we broke up, and um, I had no idea that post was going up. Uh, he didn't text me. He didn't call me. Oh. She found out she was breaking up through Instagram. Ooh. 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 That that's worse than getting being broken up with in a text, I think. Right? Uh, that's worse than ghost been getting ghosted. I think. Yeah, just ghost me at that point. Uh, Joanna, this is my final story, but I, I do kind of want to get your uh, feedback on this. Um. Okay. The makers of Goldfish. Goldfish are changing the name. Goldfish, the snack that smiles, smiles back. back. Oh yeah, and I love Goldfish. They're running it's a, baked. Not fried. They're running they're uh, a promotion where they're trying to uh, appeal more to grown-ups, not so much to kids. So they are rebranding oh. Goldfish Crackers. I don't think it needs. It's to be come done. to our okay. attention that some people think Goldfish Crackers are just for kids. No. Well, what if we call them Chilean sea bass? <laughs> <laughs> they look just like goldfish. They taste just like goldfish. Except they're called Chilean sea bass. <laughs> mm. So sophisticated. So adult. Okay. Uh, so interesting fact about... What the hell? <laughs> Chilean sea bass? Yeah. Chilean I do like bass. a nice Chilean sea bass. Real good. Uh, so a little thing about goldfish. Goldfish uh, originally were marketed as uh, to adults. You guys probably don't remember, but and it was really before my time of going to bars, but I've seen it on TV shows. They'd have out, like, pretzels or nuts or snacks or something to make you thirstier so you drink more more booze, right, right? right? Well, that was who they were marketing goldfish for when they came, came out. Uh, bars used to offer free snacks like peanuts and pretzels. Remember that? Except then everybody's dirty hands. Everybody's grubby hands. That's why I don't let you touch any of my food. But then the alcohol will kill all that. No. So, you know. The alcohol's not on... <laughs> no. Well, sometimes it can be on your hands, but it's not always on your hands. But, Joanna, exact same reason when he, uh, he sees me eating something and he's about to go in for it, I'm always like, Ugh! I know, no! you guys have real weird battles over there. Mm -hmm. uh, th this is only temporary, and it's more of a joke than anything else, but can you imagine if other, f if other fast food places that kids love decided to hmm. to go more grown up. The Colonel's back with my fancy bucket. Yes, I'm taking a page from the Goldfish Playbook and offering you all sorts of delicious adult meals. Try my six-piece coca bean or even my poulet a la poquette. Uh, <laughs> this is just normal chicken. Wrong. It is fancy chicken and you will respect it. And try one of my delicious sides, <laughs> like Epidemi. Mm-mm-mm. And this is just normal corn yeah, on the corn, cob. Corn on the cob. it with your untrained palate. You hear me? If you can't enjoy the finer things, then you need to go someplace else. This place is fancy. Fancy, and you will enjoy my fancy meals or pay the price. Yes, sir. The new fancy chicken bucket. Try it today. <laughs> While you're working away, we're working for you. Our job task and boost team. Visit Cintas.com. Oh, I'm ready. And get ready for the workday. 
Live from the KLAQ studios, the Buzz Adams Morning Show. Courtesy of Blasheen, Vias, and Enderman Personal Injury Lawyers. At GVILaw.com. So, uh, remind me, all the guests we have today. And don't, oh. for, don't forget uh, uh, the uh, Rebel Spirit podcaster. Right. Yes, thank you. Uh, so, 7.15, we're going to have the uh, Sheriff's County uh, deputies come in, talk about their fall festival and a fun run they're having. Uh, they're going to be raising money for a good cause, which we will find out about from them. And then uh, Carlos Mencia, after he gets done with, he's doing the rounds today. So wherever he's at, he'll just well, pop I, in. I, I texted, Did you talk to? I texted with, no, I never talked to. Did you text with his publicist? No, I was on vacation that week. Well, who did you know? Who did you talk to yesterday? Because then he texted me back saying, uh, I'm, I'm getting some weird conflicting reports from somebody. I, I talked to him and said, hey, look, we're really going to be slammed with yeah, guests. Yeah. And I didn't mean that as in we don't have time for you. He, he took it that way. And then I said, no, no, I'm just saying, be aware. We're going to have people in and out. So you're going to. And he's <laughs> eventually Carlos is like, so you need me to be your sidekick for today. And I was like. Well, it sounds bad when you put it that way, but yeah, essentially, yeah. <laughs> we're just going to have so much stuff going on. Uh, uh, oh, and then um, Akila uh, 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 Hughes is a podcaster, very popular podcaster. She's doing one where she goes back to her high school in Kentucky mm -hmm. to try and get them to change their mascot from the Rebels. She says that in the old days, they had like a full-on Confederate flag. On the on their basketball court in their gymnasium, and she wants them to change the mascot to the biscuits mm -hmm. because that's something everybody in the South loves. Biscuits. So we'll talk to Akila Hughes, and who else? And then we're gonna have in um, James, James Montoya, a uh, candidate for district attorney's office. He's gonna be in at uh, eight, and then tomorrow we're gonna have a uh, current district or currently serving district attorney Bill Hickson to talk. Maybe we can get them to both come in tomorrow at the same time. Uh, sure. I mean, if they want to do that, and it's then not necessarily the case. I scheduled a call in with a listener. Yes. Who has been helping me r remind me to post the podcast a bunch? <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to say thank you to him publicly. I'm sorry. They so if if the podcast is late or if I'm forgetting, he will text me every day. I thought you were annoyed when people do that. No. Hey, I'm uh, just annoyed when you text me. Let's uh, let's talk about this for a second. The Department of Justice says they are going to be looking into whether or not Elon Musk is breaking election law with his one million dollar giveaway. What? What's wrong with this? I should be able to give as much money as I want for any of the things that I want. You think Elon Musk sounds like uh, <laughs> who is the guy in the office? The big Brian? Yeah, <laughs> that's who he sounds like. A little bit with a little accent. Uh, Elon Musk announced that he's giving away a million dollars every day to people who, A, register to vote. Should be no problem there, right? Mm hmm And B, sign a, uh, I don't know, a loyalty pledge to the First and Second Amendments of the Constitution. Again, not a problem, but some uh, people, including Republican election officials, are saying, yeah, this could be like a very serious case of, of voter fraud Well, <laughs> that's going on. Because he's, uh, the, the, the million is going to a randomly selected winner. But they do have to meet the criteria. And I don't know if the criteria is you have to be a new person. You weren't registered to vote before and you have to register or... Right, and how would they check that necessarily? Mm -hmm. But, uh, but I think what, it's, what it potentially runs afoul of is uh, gaming laws or gambling laws. Oh, because he's not running it. And we have a lot of r rules. Anytime we give away money, it, like yes. it's, it, we try and keep it fun and light on the air, but we have to go through all the legalese yes. and stuff. And I'm so, sure that if that's the case for a stupid radio station in El Paso, it's really the case for the richest man in the world. Yeah. Right? Um, okay, is this any different, though? Uh, over the weekend, uh, Democrats had a, a gathering outside uh, the Detroit Pistons... Uh, where they play basketball. Mm -hmm. So they did this with the Detroit Pistons basketball team. Shoot some hoop, so register to vote, and then they'll walk over with you to the polling place. I mean, they're not giving you a million dollars, but it is almost like somebody leading, you know, taking you by the hand and leading you. And 
No, I think that... that you, you don't see uh, any similarity Well, no, there? I'm just thinking, I remember that people used to bus. I mean, you could... You, maybe that it was yeah. illegal, but busing people to certain polling places. Well, they would like to make it. I mean, there's a certain political class in this country who wants people who don't have enough money to get their own ride <laughs> not to be able to vote, you know? So they pass a lot of these laws to make it uh, very harder. difficult for people yeah. to vote if you don't, for instance, have a car. And I know you're thinking, who doesn't have a car? Lots of people. Lots of people don't have a car, especially in, in depending on where you live. There are a lot of people uh, that don't have cars. Anyway, Elon Musk has been giving away a million dollars. I sure hope that they don't come and take the million dollars away from the people who've already gotten the million dollars. But they right. said they're saying uh, they're going to take a look at this and see what, if any, election laws are being viola violated by the world's richest man. <laughs> One eight seven seven. Sign your name. <laughs> Elon Musk says, "Sign your name." Hello, it is Elon Musk. Want to be one million dollars richer? Yes, you do. Introducing Cash for Signatures. All you have to do is sign your name, and you could win a million dollars from me. Um. Well, what am I signing? Never mind that. Now, the important thing is that you could win a million dollars. Doesn't that sound great? Well, I don't really feel comfortable signing something if I don't know. What did I say about asking questions? Just listen to this man who signed his name, and I gave him a million. Yeah, man, it's President Biden. President, <laughs> I signed some piece of paper that Elon Musk gave me, and he said he was going to give me a million dollars, man. Oh, man, I'm going to buy jelly something real nice. And I, oh, wait, this piece of paper says that I agree to vote for it. Oh, no, I've made a fool of myself, man. Everything is going according to plan. Cash for signatures. Sign your name and win money. One eight seven seven. sign your name. Yes. Because Elon said so. <laughs> Happy Halloween. World of possibilities. Fun. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. Lounge access is subject to change. See CapitalOne.com for details. The Buzz Adams Morning Show. Monday through Friday, 5 to 10. KLAQ and KLAQ HD1 El Paso. A town square media station. All right, Joanne is going to have the Hollywood cheese may on the way uh, for us in just a moment. Hey, so there's an app chat message from DJ, and he's it's talking about something you might have talked about. I, I might have missed this, but he says, Buzz has friends called the Beavers and the Barefoots. Yes. Were they hobbits? Did he <laughs> live in the Shire? <laughs> no, of course not. But my... Uh, but my friends Mary and Samwise, uh, were <laughs> <laughs> no, and Pippin. So I, I don't I, like. I've heard a bunch of different stories growing up in Oklahoma. You hear a lot of Native. First of all, the first Native American thing you hear, everybody claims to have like some Native American mm -hmm. ancestry. You know, for a group of people that we treated so so badly, so many people want to be them. You know. Uh, but also the names can sometimes be very bizarre. There was a there were multiple Dumbos. D U M B O is the last name. One time I yelled at my friend Joe Dumbo, and I got in trouble from the recess ground re recess lady because she thought I was making fun, fun of him. But you were just calling his, his name. His name is Joe Dumbo. The Barefoot, uh, Glenn Barefoot, was a good friend. <laughs> The be okay. So the, the where did you live? The Shire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you the way it was, man. That was funny. You know, I did go to school with Mexicans. I just didn't realize at the time that they were Mexicans. Do you remember? I, I've told you this story. A couple of brothers lived on my street. Uh, Johnny and Charles Aguirre. Aguirre. It's Aguirre. <laughs> Not according to. Uh, not according to Johnny and Chuck. They were Aguires. And I always thought it's like, ah, oh, I guess it's kind of like Maguire. Uh-uh. It's Aguirre. <laughs> All along it was Aguirre. Uh, Joanne is going to have this Hollywood cheese may coming up here in just a few minutes. I want to play a real quick game. It's uh, 2024, and YouGov ran a poll asking people in the year 2024, is this okay to do for Halloween? All right. Do you want to hear the results? Mm, yes. You know, there's some things that, uh, well, you, <laughs> you know, the rules uh, are, are constantly changing. Mm -hmm. But that's just the way 
that's just the way life is. So I'm going to give you... Have we decided whether it's okay to still be trick-or-treating if you are a, a teenager or an adult? <laughs> You know and what? asking for candy. If you are enjoying the holiday in the spirit that it was intended, if you're not like just grab bag and a bunch of kids. Should adults be asking for candy from other adults? You said teenager. I'm going to say adults. But 18 is qualifying. Okay, you got some adults out there that might be... Uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I work with a group home and some of the people there... That's a good point. Leave. Sure. You know, I, I wouldn't not give anybody candy because you don't know what the person's situation yeah. is. But but if you're a mentally competent adult, you know you probably don't belong on somebody's doorstep unless you're there with your kids, right? Mm-hmm. Hey, can I tell you some uh, two headlines? I was just getting into a thing. Oh, I'm I so was sorry. Already, I was already getting into it, man. <laughs> I was going to just tell you. Mm-hmm. Uh, just listen to these headlines, dude. Uh, okay. Just listen to them. Just listen to them. Chinese influence operation targets U.S. down ballot races, says Microsoft. Okay. Down ballot would be like local elections, state elections, yeah. county elections, things like that. Yes. And the other one is Russia leveraged hurricane disinformation to deepen U.S. divisions. Sure. Yeah. No, I know, I know somebody's doing that. So every time you see somebody on, on online, some of them might actually... Uh, be Americans who believe what it is they're they're spreading. Those are called useful idiots, useful <laughs> f- for bad actors mm-hmm. like right, Russia, right, right. China. Uh, but Trump was in North Carolina, and he was doing interviews saying FEMA needs to explain why they don't have any money for these people. The result uh, is, and you can decide how directly or indirectly on your own. People are out hunting, hunting. For, for FEMA personnel who are just working to, to help take care of things. But with this rhetoric going on, there are people out there who are anti-FEMA. Because of Donald Trump just repeating this kind of baseless lie. Yeah, he might not have started it, but he latched right onto it because that's the kind of person he is. Uh, in the year 2024, uh, they asked a bunch of questions. I want your answers. Is it okay? Can a woman dress as a man for Halloween? I mean, they could do that. Everybody get a bell or something. For Halloween? I'd say it's good all, every day. Sure. Uh, yeah. 69% said yes. A woman could dress as a man. Can a man dress as a woman for Halloween? Yes. Yes. 65% said yes. You you do every year. <laughs> I do so much. You dress as a woman every year. <laughs> you okay. have a, you have an entire closet of corsets for Halloween. <laughs> okay, so so now it's getting down to the nitty gritty here. Can a non Native American dress as a Native American? Mm. Oh, now we're getting to the nitty gritty. Yeah, mm. can a non Native American? You know what? I you- think like they're saying religion. No, not religion, but like ethnicities. Uh, cultural things yeah, out yeah, the window. Yeah, go to a Chiefs game. See how many people have a, like a headdress on because they do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you, you know what's interesting about this though is I saw a video of a college kid who like a white kid wearing a sombrero and poncho. Because and, of Cinco de Mayo? Yeah, something like that. And like a mustache, like a fake mustache. And all of the kids around him were saying, dude, like that was cringe. You look, dude. What? What are you doing? Then he goes to the Mexican part of town, and everybody and everybody loved it. it. Yeah. They yeah. all loved it. Uh, anyway, this number seems a little high to me. In 2024, can a non-native person dress as a Native American? 52% say it's okay. I'm going to go with okay. You're going to say it's okay. Yeah. If it's in the fun spirit of things. Can a child... Like, what if you were going as the village people? Oh, we did that one year. You Somebody had to be the Indian, and I don't think the person actually had uh, uh, Native American ancestry, so... But yeah, it's kind of essential for the costume, right? Mm-hmm. Nobody ever brought that up when when the village people were a thing. Nobody's like, "Hey, that Indian's not really an Indian," and I don't think that cop can make a rest. <laughs> <laughs> can a child dress up in a cultural costume if they're not part of that culture? An example was Disney put out Moana 
costumes a few years ago, and the one for The Rock's character uh, was covered in tri- tribal tattoos, and those were actually real tribal tattoo designs, and some people lost their mind because a four-year-old was wearing the, the Moana. Look, if, it, yeah, if a child if it's a kid, loved I mean. something so much, loved a property mm. of, of entertainment so much that they want to be part of it, I don't. I don't see what's wrong with that. It's Halloween. So you guys are yes. Yeah. Sixty-two percent agree. Sixty-two percent said, "Yep, yeah, it's okay for a kid." Uh oh, this is uh, an interesting one. I never even think of this one. Can your costume include a realistic-looking gun or other weapon? A re- mm, okay. Let, let me preface realistic-looking through the years at the Halloween parade. I've been to. Every single one of them for over 30 years. Sometimes we'd have a weapon. Now, sometimes the weapon would be cartoonish. But if I, you know, I'm a stickler for realism. So I would march with an actual, uh, you know, gun in a holster. No bullets in the gun, no bullets in the holster. So they're asking, is it okay to include a realistic looking gun or other weapon? I just want to hear what you guys say. No, I say no. I, I, you know, I think there's just too it's many. It's going to make it hard for you to, if it's a, a party at a bar or a club or anything. It's going to it might make it more difficult. But right. Joanna, when I go to these uh, comic cons, El Paso comic mm-hmm. cons, I don't know what's going on because everybody's got a weapon, whether it's a lightsaber, <laughs> you know, or some kind of futuristic <laughs> gun or whatever. Uh-huh. I, I don't know. It doesn't look like they're giving those people any extra attention at security. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so 34% say that it's okay to use a realistic gun as part of your Halloween costume. And finally, and I just want you to tell me, do you think this is, well, we got to get an over under on this. So the question is, can white people wear black face makeup? No. Let me finish the sentence. The answer is going to be no. The answer is going to be no. no I know, but I just, I just want to complete the sentence. Can white people wear blackface makeup if they're t- dressing up as a black person? No, you shouldn't no. be dressing up as a black person. <laughs> this number of people who say it's fine is, to me, shockingly high. What is it? 33%. <laughs> In 2024 like, yeah. said, yeah, um, 52% said definitely, definitely not. So uh, I, I yes. think that's probably a safe one to go with. Uh, if you want more uh, advice on uh, being politically correct this Halloween, get this year's costume at the Politically Correct Halloween Emporium. We've got costumes that aren't offensive or insensitive to wear to your company party so you won't get fired from your job. Like our politically ambiguous, racial-free, non-gender <laughs> binding ghost costume with sheets that come in a variety of colors so you don't upset anyone. Or try... Well... Actually, that's all we have, because whatever costume you do wear, somebody's feelings are going to be hurt or oppressed or discriminated against. All right, with an opposing view, here is the <laughs> Crypt Keeper with commentary. <laughs> Halloween will soon be upon us, and with it, the dead will rise, and zombies will tear you limb from limb, eating your flesh. <laughs> Uh, a quick disclaimer that the violent nature of the zombies is not approved or condoned by this station. Also, eating of flesh is highly unsubstantiated and not allowed. What? Oh, and, and <laughs> the demons from hell will attack all souls, dragging you to below the pits of hell. Uh, also, there will be no attacking or touching of any human by demons in inappropriate ways unless consensual verbal communication is first observed from that said person and or persons. <laughs> You shall be tortured by the never-ending painful screams of ghostly... Uh, torturing and or waterboarding is not a legal nor condoned act of this person of evil nor any other person. Now I give up. Forget it. Please have a happy and safe Halloween. It's the Hollywood cheese man. It's the Hollywood cheese man. Joanna, tell us more. All right, let's get into the Hollywood Cheese May, our entertainment report with Joanna Barber. Good morning, Joanna. Good morning. Elon Musk named as a defendant in a copyright infringement lawsuit filed by the production company behind the sci-fi movie Blade Runner 2049 had a three-word response to the litigation. (laughs) 
He said, and I quote, that movie sucked. <laughs> <laughs> the the sequel to Blade Runner? Yes. I liked it. I liked it. Well, I didn't love it. Musk I liked it, though. probably hates it because of this lawsuit. Musk, Tesla, and Warner Brothers Discovery are accused of misappropriating the intellectual property of Alcon Entertainment's Blade Runner 2049 for last month's launch of Tesla's robot taxi self-driving cyber cab. Alcon also expressed concerns about being associated with Musk due to his extreme political and social views. The lawsuit seeks damages and aims to stop Tesla from using the unlicensed promotional materials. Do you know who I think could really have a case? Who? The guy who made iRobot with Will Smith. Oh, Look at for those, sure, yeah. those upcoming Optimus, humanoids. You know. Yeah, right. All the memes have that robot. Wait, so are they saying they that <laughs> are they saying Tesla stole the design for their robo taxi? They're saying like when they're promoting it, they're using like Blade Runner 40, 2049 things. Huh. But like what actual footage from the movie? I have no idea actually. <laughs> I didn't read the whole lawsuit thing. <laughs> yeah, because I'd be interested in what the what the thing they're saying that they they took was just misappropriating the intellectual property. I, I'm just gonna look up pictures because I got to see what, what's <laughs> going on here. I mean, before uh, Blade Runner twenty whatever it was twenty forty nine, they had a self driving cab in the one where where uh, oh. uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger goes to Mars and his eyes bulge out you remember that one why why Three did you always lady? forget it oh, total recall uh. yeah <laughs> because i don't have total recall <laughs> <laughs> nice. yeah they had a cab have a nice day yeah. you remember that i think well and they had a cabbie though, like a ro robot cabbie it's called a johnny cab all right <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they put their cyber taxi in stills or images from the movie to make it look like, like this is what it's going to look like. This is what it would look and, like. Yeah, I don't the know what that, is I think now. that is what happened. I don't know the merits of of this. Are they suing? Have they yes. actually brought legal action? Yes. Okay, interesting. And that's what Elon Musk is saying. That movie sucked. sucked. Cooper Hefner is making a $100 million all-cash bid to buy Playboy, the iconic company founded by his father, with the goal of restoring the brand to its roots. In a statement to People Magazine, Cooper explained that, saying, quote, this brand is woven into my family's legacy, and I've seen firsthand its cultural impact over the decades. After leaving Playboy in 2019 to start his own digital media platform, Hefner Media Corporation, and after an unsuccessful run for a California state Senate seat, in 2020, Cooper is now looking to return to the family business. His bid aims to acquire the intellectual property and brand assets of Playboy Enterprises from its publicly, publicly traded parent company. Cooper said, quote, I believe Playboy can once again lead the conversation around lifestyle, entertainment, and individual freedom and emphasize the importance of working with current stakeholders to achieve a beneficial outcome for all. Hmm. All right. Right before their big Christmas rush, Hallmark has been slapped with an age discrimination lawsuit. Penny Perry, a former Hallmark casting director, filed the suit on October 9th, alleging that she was fired due to her age. According to the complaint, Hallmark executive VP of programming Lisa Hamilton Daly called Perry too long in the tooth and sought to have her fired and allegedly said, quote, we need to bring in someone who knows more young talent. Our leading ladies are aging out. The suit says Hamilton Daly cited Lacey Chabert. Don't you dare say anything bad about Lacey Chabert. Right. And Holly Robinson Pete as too old to be in Hallmark joints anymore. According I, to the. I think they need to do some audience research about who's watching the age yeah, of people watching. If it these. has Lacey Chabert in it, I'm watching it. Yeah, it's people Gretchen our age. <clears throat> I'm totally watching it. Gretchen Wieners, right? According to the lawsuit. Gretchen Wieners. She should do a very Wieners Christmas. <laughs> According to the lawsuit, <laughs> Hamilton Daly said Shaber, of Shaber, quote, Lacey's getting older and we have to find someone <laughs> like her to replace her oh, as God. she gets older. This is everything she you assume you, is, you hate about Hollywood. She is 42. 42, way. yeah. The exec also said no one wants Robinson Pete, who is 60, by the way, because she's too expensive and getting too old. She can't play leading roles anymore. Well, in a statement, Hallmark said, quote, Lacey and Holly have a home at Hallmark. We do not generally comment on pending litigation. And while we do deny these outrageous allegations, we are not going to discuss an employment relationship in the media. However, Lacey Chabert has a movie coming out on Netflix. So maybe she's already making the move. Mm. 
Okay. And finally, in what surely comes as a heartbreaking disappointment to Donald Trump, Insane Clown Posse's <laughs> Violent J has endorsed Kamala Harris for not, president. Not both of the Insane Clown, clown Posse, not just both, Violent J? Just Violent okay. J. Speaking with comedian Troy Iwata for a recent segment of The Daily Show, Violent J confirmed that Harris is his preferred pick for the White House, and he also learned how to say her name for the very first time. I want her to win because she's a Democrat, and I love my mom. Okay. I see it. All right. That's a beautiful sentiment. Yeah. Yeah. How do you say her first name? Kamala. Kamala? Yeah. <laughs> Kamala? Like comma, la. That's fresh. <laughs> <laughs> this guy yeah. seems like super chill to hang out with. After uh, who was that? Violet, Violet J, J from, from Insane, Insane Club Posse. Posse. I'm not, a, not familiar. Now I guess this means all juggalos are going to have to to vote the way Violent J says. To I right? guess so because before all that, the guy was asking at the juggalo place. I don't know what they call the gathering of the juggalos. Yeah. Who they were voting for, and a lot of them were like, "I'm not voting." <laughs> Uh, is he the one that does not know how time works? He's the mm. one that doesn't know how magnets maybe, work. Maybe Kamala Harris can explain magnetism to Violent J. Yeah. <laughs> Water, fire, air, and dirt. F***ing magnets. How do they work? <laughs> <laughs> After watching the antics on January 6th, people like the QAnon sh shaman, I would have thought there'd be a lot of crossover between the juggalos and really... You know, real MAGA supporters. You know what I mean? Man, you can't F with juggalos. <laughs> Elsewhere in the interview, Violent J weighed in on a number of hot topic issues like mass deportation, which he said F no to, and said, quote, now I remember why I hated Trump. That wall crap. But he didn't say crap. Mm -hmm. I tried to get a bunch of audio for this, but... It would take a lot of energy. Wait, well, this is the this is the best insane clown posse audio ever. Water, fire, air, and dirt. F***ing magnets. How do they work? <laughs> I love that so much. Love it. With your entertainment news, I'm Joanna Barba. Coming up after the Buzz Adams Morning Show, Glenn Garza and Daniel Polis. Choir's eligible plan, need coverage, and other restrictions apply. Visit att.com slash one network for details. Oh, guess who this is? Buzz Adams and the KLAQ Morning Show. You must be the greatest radio show host ever. Buzz, buzz. buzz is back. Joanne, I know that this uh, this dining deal does it. We, we're not supposed to start talking about it until tomorrow, but I I feel like right. I feel compelled to talk about it. Well, no, it, no, <laughs> Joanna, you know what he feels compelled about what? is rubbing it in my face that I left oh, right you didn't before get any of the sushi. they came. Uh, next week, dining deals return where you can get fifty dollars of food for just twenty five dollars, so half price. And this week, next week, it's gonna be Sushi Freak. They've got mm -hmm. two locations. Oh. So West Town good. Marketplace in Cimarron. Cimarron. And East Lake Marketplace Center. They brought in this pl this deluxe, beautiful platter of sushi. And it, it just Buzz phenomenal. And I went to town on it. God, I was so happy. Joanna and I had, had a big project, a meeting we had to do yesterday. It was was like, there any salmon? <laughs> no, there no. was salmon, though. There was no, <laughs> there was no salmon? Uh-uh. That's not a thing. No. <laughs> salmon is not how you say that okay. word all at right. all. Uh, so, Sushi Freak, <laughs> next week's dining deal. Looking yeah. forward to it. That was great stuff. You like sushi, Julian? I do, actually. Mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> this is, uh, we got a new friend in here. Yeah, it's, we do. it's Deputy Ochoa, uh, Julian, to his friends with the El Paso Sheriff's Department. Great to have you in today, Julian. Woo! Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> it's good to be here with you let's, all. <laughs> uh, let's talk about your big event, and you're talking about how much you... This week is going in to, to getting this uh, event to go off right the way you want it to at a scarity park. Yes, yes. Uh, we've been we've been busy for quite a bit trying to, you know, cross our T's, dot our I's, uh, trying to get this event to uh, run as smoothly and as perfect as possible. Okay. Uh, Tell me, first of all, the cause. What are we what are we raising money for? OK, yeah. So basically uh, the cause is to help our foundation um, and our Explorer program and uh, so we're inviting the public out here. Uh, the money goes to, you know, helping in case uh, run into emergency, uh, you know, with, with the deputies out there um, and they need extra quick funding. Uh, that's basically the purpose of our foundation okay. is right. to help supplement that. All right. Now tell me what 
the activities and the event is on on Saturday. Okay, so on Saturday, so at 5 p.m., uh, we're, it's going to begin with our fall festival. Uh, we're going to have music, uh, bands. We're going to have inflatables out there. Um, we're even going to have a beer garden out there okay. for the adults. All right, <laughs> for the adults. Now we're cooking. All right. Okay, adults or kids, can people wear their Halloween costume if yes. they want to give it a, a spin? Yes, highly encouraged. <laughs> yeah. Highly encouraged. Try it out. <laughs> we only got eight days until Halloween. Take yeah, it seriously. out and see, get responses, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Get tested out before you get into that costume contest. <laughs> <laughs> and this is going to be at Escarate Park. Yes, sir. It's going to be at Escarate Park um, near the pavilion. Uh, that's where the fall festival is going to be held. It starts at five. Um, it's, we're also going to have, um, we're inviting multiple law enforcement agencies, also other local businesses out there uh, where they're going to be passing out candy. Uh, so it's going to be a safe area for parents to take their children to trick or treat. Um, also, right, uh, promptly starting at 6, uh, we're also having our zombie run. Oh, tell me about this. Yes. Yeah. So, our zombie run, um, so basically what it is is you're going to have flags, right? Yeah. And uh, so, the goal is to finish the race with at least one flag left. Uh, two flags? You get uh, two flags? You get two flags, okay. yes. So, there's two flags attached to the belt. Question. <laughs> yes. About the zombies. Yes. Slow zombies or those fast, mm, you know, those fast are, ones? Yeah, are they walkers or are they... Uh, <laughs> well... So you're gonna have the like the walkers, like the first ones from the Walking of the Dead, and then you're gonna have some evolved ones mm-hmm. that run and chase. <laughs> and these would be more like twenty, twenty eight days later type of zombies. Yes, yeah. Oh, that sounds really fun. <laughs> yeah. They're gonna get your flag. Yeah. Now what happens if you get to the end, you still have a flag? Do, do you win okay. a prize? So yes. So if you finish the race, right? Um you still you get a you get an awesome looking medal that we have uh if you go on to our sheriff's uh, on to our uh um our instagram our facebook you'll see pictures of the medal of the sheriff medal mm-hmm. that you're gonna get it is oh, awesome cool. i recommend you check that out but if you finish with your flags um you get an attachment so there's a little sheriff uh badge pendant that goes to it oh, it looks cool. awesome you it, get that it sounds like everybody can have a lot of fun is the race for adults and kids yes oh, it is yeah. yes it is everybody can get in <laughs> there for ages. the zombie race yes yes how yeah. uh how, okay let me ask this question how how much running is it is it a, a 3k a 1k yes it, it is it is a 3k okay all right <laughs> very good now those zombies would be eat my brains <laughs> before i got to the second k <laughs> there's no doubt about it um, i'll be a judge if there's <laughs> if you need me out there we got you. Uh, all right uh deputy ochoa from the uh uh el paso sheriffs and fundraiser this saturday at a scarity. Uh, I guess with Halloween coming up, we got a we got a police deputy here. What are the kind of things you remind people of every year? Be extra careful. You know, we always have the Halloween parade, so yes. I'm always driving back from that at around the time that the kid, they especially the little kids, go out yes. a little earlier. You got to start paying attention. I would say as early as two two p.m. <laughs> these yes. days. Yes, yes. Uh, you know what? I want to remind folks. You know, uh, please keep an eye on your children. Um, if you, I mean. If make sure that they're looking both ways when they cross the street, mm-hmm. hold their hands. Um, of course, um, always you know check the candy. Yeah, right. <laughs> always check the candy. Um, you know, um, I always thought sure. that was my dad running a scam on me because he, you know, he'd be eating it. Yeah, what are you doing? The dad I'm tax. Checking it. I'm checking <laughs> to make sure it's safe. <laughs> <laughs> the dad tax. <laughs> Everybody's got to pay the tax. Yeah, I do that to yeah. my kids. <laughs> Um, but are yes. your kids in the uh, the trick or treating range right now? Yes, they uh, are. Yes, en- they enjoy are. that. It doesn't last forever. No, uh, <laughs> you know what? I see my my oldest. He's already he's already he's already it. like, am yeah. I going to do it this year? Yeah, so it kind of breaks my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Where can people get tickets for this event? Okay, yes. So for so the fall festival, it is a free event. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so you know. It's, uh, a lot of these, a lot of our events, we like to make them free, you know, open to the public. You know, it's it's our way of giving back to the public. You know, um, again, I mean, we're trying to pr- promote a safe environment mm-hmm. for, for families to bring their kids to trick or treat. Yeah, sounds like a lot of fun. You get yeah. some candy about a week early, you get a jump on it, bring those go. costumes out, <laughs> kids and adults, bring those costumes yes. out, and. Uh, 
uh, have a lot of fun at a scary mm-hmm. park, it sounds like. Well, yes, thank yes. you, Julian, hey, Deputy well, Ochoa. Uh, uh, Julian, I had a question. Jo- Joanna's too embarrassed to have asked this uh, herself. But <laughs> oh, she wanted right? me to ask this. Are you married? You. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, am I too embarrassed to ask? That was, that was it. Well, yeah, she wanted <laughs> to know if you were married. Yeah. But she also wanted to know why the, the sheriff's department doesn't put out a uh, calendar oh, like yeah. the firemen do. <laughs> Oh, well. Yeah, that's why, a why, very good question. Do you not have a bunch of buff sheriff's deputies that could... I feel like it could really heighten your cause, you know? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. You know what? I will get with my supervisor. Yeah. Right? And I'll be like, you know what, ma'am? I think we need, a, we need to recruit some of the boys. I, I think yeah. it would really help. Those firefighters have been slanging it out there for yeah. years. Slanging yeah. hose. All right, there we go. All right, thank you, deputy, for coming thank by and talking much. to us today. This Halloween... We're handing this 21 and over. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts for the power, performance, and reliability of a new Super Start battery. Visit O'ReillyAuto.com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Facebook for more info on El Paso's biggest Dallas Cowboys tailgate party with Rocket as Mile. Live from the KLAQ studios, the Buzz Adams Morning Show. Courtesy of Glasheen, Vias, and Enderman Personal Injury Lawyers. At GVILaw.com. Still coming up on the show, candidate for District Attorney James Montoya will be coming by. Uh, and then tomorrow, District Attorney Bill Hicks is going to be in the studio. <laughs> it's Halloween and election deadline all converging and coming together at the same time. <laughs> mm. Thank you. In our app chat message and on the KLQ mobile app, you can message us directly. Chicana on the beach says, Buzz asking, oh, tell me about that run like he's going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I go. I, do you remember? Did you guys work for this company when we used to have the those big inflatable course runs and we put them on? Are you? Kidding? There's a whole video of me yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, dressed as the one. sun, where I and I was drenched in sweat. That's why Joanna can't wear that costume anymore. I mean, I would go to that, but yeah, I'm not running it anything like that. <laughs> You got to turn and fight if a zombie's chasing you. <laughs> you can't run away from your problem, especially if there's zombies, forever. I got a couple of things I want to talk about. Uh, James Montoya is going to be by a little later this hour. And then Carlos Mencia. Uh, at yeah. some point, we're not exactly sure, but we, we, we believe he's coming in today. And shows with Carlos Mencia start uh, tonight. At the start tonight. Yep. Who I'll be is the MC? Yours truly. Mm-hmm. Um, this is from Reddit. What's your pettiest reason for not dating someone? All right. I just want to tell you some of the uh, answers. Tell me if you can relate to any of them. Uh, a guy, this is a woman speaking. She says, this guy did his Beavis impression from Beavis and Butthead. And I realized he kind of looked like Beavis <laughs> in general, so... So that was it. I'm a bad impression, bro. (laughs) Or a good impression. A woman says that on Tinder, she always swiped left on any guy holding an iPhone without a case. Because, quote, I don't need that kind of stress in my life. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty petty. That's extremely petty. (laughs) Uh, It's a woman. He had a Velcro wallet. (laughs) Do you even know what that is? Was a it wallet. still attached to his shorts? <laughs> a vel- uh, you know, like a wallet. Yeah, I know. A lot of them are in swim trunks and stuff. They used to oh, them. are they? Okay. <laughs> uh, here's another. Boy, is this only women complaining about reasons? Yeah, probably. Petty reasons? Uh, no, I've known, I've known some guys that can be pretty petty. But this is a woman. A guy spread ketchup across his entire plate at breakfast, then chopped his food up into one big pile in the ketchup. And the woman says pancakes were involved. Oh, <laughs> gross. Yeah, good, good That's call. That's weird. Yeah, good call. Okay, here's one from a guy. Pettiest reasons for, for dumping somebody or not dating somebody. A woman took 40 minutes getting ready to take her dog for a walk. 
chump. Yeah, that is a lot. I've, I've waited, <laughs> Just for a walk? I've waited an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it doesn't, uh, unsure what gender the person is reporting this, but they say the pettiest reason they broke up with someone is because the person didn't use turn signals. And here's a quote. If you can't communicate on the road, you can't communicate in real life. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. That's not even petty. That's kind of a good, that's a good one. It's a life hack. Do you, do you guys remember my story about the pettiest reason a woman said that we, we couldn't uh, date? Um, no. I was not sufficiently a big enough fan of the Dave Matthews band. <laughs> I pretended to like him, but she could be like, look, maybe you do like him, but I can tell your heart's not really in it. You're not- I've never heard a Dave Matthews song. Yes, you have. No, I haven't. And then the other day that I sat down to watch the whole oh. rock and roll induction ceremony, Dave Matthews was like the last one. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, I've seen enough. And I turned it off. Yeah, before you got to see his? Before I got to see his. Oh. Julia Roberts was the one who introduced them, and I thought that was weird. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, <laughs> a guy, so this is a lady talking about a petty reason she, she dumped somebody. Uh, the guy clapped at the end of the movie, and as his date, I felt like I had to clap too, but relationship over. <laughs> one guy in a movie theater clapping and you feel like, oh, I guess I'm with him. So, <laughs> uh, I'd not. I'd be like, you're on your own oh, there, dude. Oh, man. Here, here's one that I, I can relate to. A guy said, she had the same name as my mom. I just couldn't go through with it. <laughs> You've uh, tried to drain to Shirley? Uh, no, I don't think I ever tried, but it, this never was banged so to weird. Shirley. It happened? This was so weird. My mom's name is Shirley. So I get, to, I get to college. There's a lady who's like 10 years older than me. She's in the class, the same class. Her name is Shirley, and she has the same last name as me and my mom have. So her name was the exact same What? As my mom. And she Were had come like, from my hometown like like 10 years I before I graduated. Not? Were you like, mom? No. <laughs> and I, I guess she said she knew my mom somehow. I didn't know there were two Shirley's. With that last name. That's a glitch in the matrix. <laughs> yeah, that was really weird. Surely you can't be serious. <laughs> <laughs> Surely you must be joking. I'm not. Stop calling me Shirley. <laughs> mm, let's see. Uh, there are a few more. What's here. the pettiest reason you've rejected a woman? <sighs> yeah. God, I have to put some thought into it. I don't think I've ever really been uh, super, super petty like that. But here's one, and it makes sense if you stop to think about it. Uh, Somebody (laughs) said serious food allergies. If you're dating somebody with serious food allergies, it's too much pressure knowing that if you kiss that person after eating peanut butter, they could die. I'm sorry, your body's just (laughs) defective. Yes, that sounds so scary. Imagine they start breaking out in hives and then they look at you like, did you eat peanut butter today? (laughs) You've undone me. Uh, finally, there was going to be a Brady Bunch revival a few years ago. Wait, are we moving off of that mm-hmm. top of the last topic? Because mm-hmm. I was going to bring oh. up like the pettiest oh, reasons. Oh, that, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, we were. Yeah. I thought we were By all means. We were. Oh, call in. Here you go. Yeah, yeah call please. us in. Send us a message in the app chat or a voice message in the app chat as well. Uh, or neckline, you can leave a message eight four four eight zero five neck. They're great. Yeah, I've never heard you play one. People can oh, leave yeah, voice last week we did this contest for screams. People were sending in their submissions through, through the, the app. app yeah. mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, do that then. But you can call the neckline, too, mm-hmm. 844-805-NECK. What's the pettiest reason you ever broke up with somebody? She had a lisp, but, okay, get, here's the thing. I'm not holding <laughs> a lisp against her. I'm not I don't saying, think that would be a deal breaker. No, no, for me it was I couldn't not laugh or <laughs> make fun of it. <laughs> I feel like making fun you of it. You wanted to point it out. Yeah, I just like po- poker or something, but I knew that. <laughs> she mentioned before that she's a little sensitive about her lisp. You know how I knew she was sensitive about it? She <laughs> wouldn't bring it up at all, like just kind of ignored it. What kind of lisp? Like a what standard like? lisp? A Philly lisp. A, a Philly, a Philly, a Philly lisp. one? Or sometimes girls have like a really cute lisp. It was not a lilt in the voice. It was it was a full on lisp. Lisp. Cindy Brady. Um, guess what? I have a story about Cindy Brady. Did you tell her 
Baby talk, baby, baby talk. talk. <laughs> it's a wonder you can walk. Do you want to hear the pettiest reason I didn't date someone? Uh, because he they took you to Gemini Man. Yeah. <laughs> we no, all know the story. That date. story. And I didn't see him after that. No, I have an even pettier reason. Okay. So uh, before this guy, uh, we were going on a date, I kind of did some stalking on Instagram. Of course. And I found a comment he left on like one of the social media pages. And I just did not care for the comment. That he left on another like. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I don't think I'm going to be able to make it. Tell me again. (laughs) So he left a comment on FitFam. I'm just going to say it was on FitFam. And I saw that he left that comment. And it was something about like, oh, these females think they're so blah, blah, blah. I get suspicious anytime I I hear a guy under the age of 40 call a, refer to a woman as female. These females. Right. I feel like that's some kind of like man. What's, you know, like some kind. I I don't remember these jerks. And so I saw these men's rights. I was like, that's totally Joe. I know it. And I just, I was like, you know, I don't think this is going to work out. Just going to call him out by name here, huh? Yeah, Joe. You didn't like his comment about females. I didn't like his comment that I found on (laughs) Bitfam. So we're going to talk about... uh, Oh, we got two call scenarios for the phone. Let me get through this real quick. We'll we'll, we'll revisit the petty reasons for breaking up with somebody. There was almost a Brady Bunch reunion on CBS recently. Oh, a recent oh, one, not yeah. like the Christmas one. No, 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 no. They had those through the, you know, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, I mm-hmm. guess. Uh, do you remember 2019 when HGTV did a show called A Very Brady Renovation? They fixed up the original oh, Brady yeah, house. Oh, yeah, to make it kind of look like the actual house. Well, that was such a success that CBS was interested in in a revival of the Brady Bunch. Yeah, why and not? it seemed like they had everybody who was still living uh, on board. Except uh, Greg. Are, are all the, the six Brady kids still alive? I think so. Okay. I do believe so. Why not Greg? Yeah, why not Greg? I don't know. Oh. Uh, not uh, not the dad, Mr. Brady. Mr. Brady. Uh, Flo, Florence? She might have passed away oh, before no. 2019. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, they, they were serious about it. They worked on it for a year, and all of the Brady kids... Uh, had a hand in recreating their characters. It's like, how do you, you know, what would your character development for your own character be? Susan Olsen, who played the youngest one in Curls, Cindy, is a libertarian and Trump supporter in real life. So she oh, wanted yeah. her character to be that it. way on the show. Oh, she wanted to transfer that into the Brady reunion. She wanted to model it on the Roseanne revival, featuring, quote, a family with completely different political opinions, and in the end, they all love and respect each other. Okay. Uh, uh, so fine, we're okay at that point. Unfortunately, CBS says they discovered that Cindy got fired from a radio job in 2016 for saying things that were perceived as homophobic. They asked her to take a course on political correctness, which she, <laughs> which she did. She did. But they came up with 50 pages worth of other stuff that they found objectionable. So the whole thing ended up being scrapped. Yikes. Do you want to hear what uh, Susan Olsen had to say? Cindy Brady. Cindy. Cindy. Baby talk, baby talk. <laughs> it's a wonder you can walk. I'm like, wow, wow, I've been canceled. A role that I've played for over 50 years, I can't play it now because I'm too dangerous. Uh, by the way, Susan Olson says she stands by everything she said that caused CBS to cancel her in the first place. Oh, uh, she's a big anti-vaxxer. Oh, uh, yeah. Anti, uh, anti-trans. anti Mm-hmm. Cindy Brady? Yeah. It's not against the law to be either one of those things, I guess. No, it just... But... I mean, it means you're Ill- ill-informed, <laughs> if you are. If you're a vaccine denier, you're incredibly ill-informed. I think you probably have not uh, processed all of the scientific data. But does that make you a bad person? No. I don't think okay. it's a moral judgment on people. All right. Well, uh, they they didn't get the Bradys back together. Uh, you know what Cindy. would have been great? They could, should have gone ahead and do it and say, oh, Cindy she died, died because she got COVID. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh What's your name, ma'am? Cindy Brady. Not anymore, you're not.
Do you remember that little talk we had at breakfast this morning? Uh-uh. If I really wanted to, I would have told you about the time... Cindy, that he... Cindy, <laughs> Cindy. Well, let's just drop the whole subject, shall we? Whatever it is. So consider yourself uninvited. But I didn't do anything wrong. No, that's none of your business. Okay, that's no fun. Nobody likes the Nobody like I'm Daniel Paulus, and whether you're wrapping up your work day, get up to 40% off plus free delivery at the Home Depot. Subject to availability, see homedepot.com slash delivery for details. The Buzz Adams Morning Show, Monday through Friday, 5 to 10. KLAQ and KLAQ HD1, El Paso, a town square media station. It is the uh, political season. And Halloween, and both of those can be pretty pretty spooky <laughs> for some people. Uh, but we're talking to uh, candidates this week and hopefully next week uh, in the race for district attorney. James Montoya joins us. Hello, James. Morning, Buzz. Great to see you. So you too. We, we were just kind of talking uh, about a few things. Tell me uh, about yourself. Are you from El Paso? Where, where did you go to school? Yeah. Et cetera. Perfect questions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, born and raised here in El Paso. Yeah. I was an East Sider my whole life. High school? In, uh, Americas. Mm-hmm. So Socorro ISD. All right. Um, you know, honestly, when I graduated from high school, I couldn't wait to leave El Paso. <laughs> I, I got a senior in high school this yeah. year. And Why? Let me tell you go as far away as fast as I she's, can. She thinks she's the first person in history to have felt that way about right. her hometown. Right. I understand you. So uh, I went to uh, college in Washington, D.C., George mm-hmm. Washington. Very good. Uh, I was there for undergrad and law school. Mm-hmm. And I think probably my first or second year, I thought, you know, maybe El Paso isn't so <laughs> bad. You know, just being away... You you grow up here thinking everywhere is going to be like here. The people are going to be yeah. like, and 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 it's not. And you realize this is a really special place. You know, I miss my family and and the mountains and the food and the weather and a couple of blizzards in D.C. Yeah. Really, uh, <laughs> you kind of got to look at what the political world is like. Tell me about that. Did you or was most yeah, of your stuff no, campus oriented, or no, did you take note of what was going on in in D.C.? Yeah, so I was there in 2007 right as Obama was taking office. Mm-hmm. And so I went to his inauguration. Oh, yeah. It was phenomenal. I mean, to be out there in the mall with a million people, it was 20 degrees outside. I mean, that was a really... We had many more, yeah. many more than Obama <laughs> ever had. Right. You know, that, <laughs> leaving that inauguration was a nightmare because they closed all the subway stops around the National Mall. Mm. And so it was very easy to get to the event. Once it God. ended and you had a million people That must be leaving. going on all the time in that town. Yeah. yeah. So what was really fantastic was just the, the opportunities, the internships. You know, I, I got to intern at uh, the Department of Justice a few different times, okay. the State Department. And, um, you know, luckily by going to school there, you had opportunities during the year that, you know, in the summertime, people from Harvard and Yale and Chicago, they all, everybody comes to D.C. during the summer. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. going to school there during the school year, um, I think you had a lot more opportunities than, than you would have otherwise had. But as soon as I was over, I came right back to El Paso. And uh, we were talking about this is a thing that a lot of uh, young legal professionals do, uh, work for the district attorney's offices and right. assisted DA, and you did that. Yes, so... During college and law school, when I would come home for the summer, I would intern at the DA's office under Jaime Esparza. And after a couple of summers, I thought, you know, this is what I want to do. You Mm -hmm. know, just being around uh, those folks, that environment, I I knew I wanted to advocate for victims of crime. And so as soon as I graduated from law school, came right back home, took the bar, passed, started at the DA's office. And then uh, after about a year, I was promoted to our homicide section. And so from 2014 to 2020, I worked on on almost every murder case that happened here in El Paso during that time period. Does that include the Walmart shooting, which is a looming, looming issue? And if you would like to speak about that and what your experience with that has been and what your your plans going forward would be. Yeah. So I did work on the case. Uh, I actually, on on the day that it happened, I I went out to the crime scene. Mm. I, I walked through the Walmart. I can only um, I can only imagine it it yeah. it yeah it, it's it really unimaginable yeah, yeah really clearly never would have thought that to happen here in El Paso and, and until it does and mm-hmm. I think every city that it does happen so. in you know they never so. think it can happen until it does mm-hmm. and um, 
You know, my personal opinion, you know, I, I, I think he deserves the death penalty. Um, I have talked to people throughout the campaign who think it's more harsh to be in solitary confinement for the rest of your life for sure. 50 years. Uh-huh. You know, I know there's I, some people who think let's release him in a general population and that, <laughs> you know, and, you and so. You can't do that. Right. I mean. Right. So we'll, you know, right now we have a trial scheduled in 2026. Um, you know, I, I haven't worked on the case sure. since 2020. But I, I want to ask yeah. you, James. Sure. Ja- uh, James Montoya is running uh, for district attorney. There's an undercurrent in El Paso that I pick up from callers and people who write in. They're frustrated. A lot of these people yeah. seem very, very frustrated. What would you say to those El Pasoans who are, who are feeling that way? I, I get it. I'm frustrated. Liter- the, the, the length that this case has taken, um, I... I I understand where the frustration's coming from. I They're going to say, I mean, people would say, well, you know, COVID, everything's backed up right. because of COVID. And I think some people would respond to that by saying, fast track this one, if you can yeah. fast track anything. Yeah. But so I will tell you this. So here in El Paso, I would say on average, murder cases from the time that they happen to the time that they go to trial is about two years, maybe yeah. three years. Before this, the case that I had worked on longest went from 2013, it happened in 2013, and it went to trial in 2017, four years. The Walmart case, death penalty cases always take longer because of, of how high the stakes are. But I will tell you, there was a lot of reasons why this thing has been delayed. I mean, the number one reason, in my opinion, and it's not even COVID, it was Yvonne Rosales. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I ran against her four years ago. I was going to bring this yeah. up. You bet you. You've led me right into it. And so, you know, the first thing she did when she took office was she fired everyone in the DA's office that supported me in the Democratic primary. Mm-hmm. I mean, not the re- not not the Republicans. No, 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 no. I mean, not really. I mean. There were people, other Democrats, right, right. Anybody who she felt supported me, or you know, was a, a Jaime Esparza you loyalist. Know, loyalist. Yeah, she got rid of them, and it was close to forty lawyers and even more staff. And so that sounds very inappropriate. I want you to answer this question: Is yeah. that inappropriate for a DA, or is it unheard of, or has it ha- does it happen sometimes? So, so everybody there works at at. at the discretion of the district attorney. And every time, and it happens throughout the state of Texas, you expect some degree of turnover. Mm -hmm. You know, certainly at the top management, you know, the elected person should bring in the people that they want to implement their, their plan. Okay. But she cut so deep and, and it wasn't just supervisors or, or management. I mean, she fired secretaries and victim services personnel uh, a receptionist, you know, people that had no... She handicapped her own office, it big sounds time. like. Big time. Okay, so you, you lost to her in, right. the prim- in the Democratic primary. Right. You lost to y- Yvonne. When all of this started happening, when we found out how behind and how log jammed and just how dysfunctional the DA's office was, right. James, uh, were you thinking, I knew this was going to happen or yeah. were you surprised by it? No, totally. So I actually, when I found out she notified everyone that she was not going to keep them or, or fire them uh, around November of, of 2020. And I, I, I put out a statement saying this is going to have very detrimental impacts on cases. They're going to fall through the cracks. There's not enough lawyers to work on the cases. This is going to be very bad. And I look back at that video from four years ago and I think this is exactly what happened. But I, I'll tell you, you know, in the Walmart case, she fired every single person working on it. The lawyers, the the secretaries, victim services folks, that was a big reason for the delay. Would you say she's res- she's responsible for the lion's share of, of of what's gone wrong with the with the Walmart case? Or, or I would is- I would say so. Yes, yeah. and then okay. the the thing that was really unpredictable, this I couldn't have foreseen even on on the craziest days, was what ended up happening where the DA's office some of her own staff, they were impersonating victims' families in, in Mexico. That's right. And then there was attempts to keep them from crossing. Yeah. They were going to come to court. I remember reading about this day in and day out. Yeah. It got very murky after a while. And right. it's like, what is, what is going on with our district attorney's office? I mean, there was some potential criminal liability. And, and when they ended up having a hearing about it, you know, she had to plead the fifth. 
and and one of her assistant DAs had to plea the fifth. I mean that to have your district attorney, your your top law enforcement officer say. I'm invoking my right to remain silent because it will incriminate me it is just shocking. James, I want to go back a little bit to uh, to your work history. So you did work as a prosecutor. Mm-hmm. You are now a public defender. So yes, tell me about that change, why you made it, what the decision was like. Yeah, so I never, when I was in law school, had no idea, no intentions of ever being a defense lawyer. I mean, I, I knew I was going to be a yeah. prosecutor. That's Those guys wear tweed jackets right. to court. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I there was a, a sh- I did a short stint buzz as a federal prosecutor in Oklahoma. Oh yeah, I was there for about a year, year and a half. Where uh, in Muskogee? Yeah, yeah. I, I was in Oakie Muskogee. From Muskogee. Yeah. Yeah. I was from Mulgee. Muskogee. Oh, Muskogee, very, right very down similar. the road. Hey, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it, isn't BT from Muskogee? But BT is from Muskogee. Yeah. Uh, my favorite line is uh, Oakmulgee is a lot like Muskogee, but without all the glitz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, God. So there was actually in 2020 a, a, an incredible Supreme Court decision that ruled uh, that the land that had been promised to the five major Native American tribes in Oklahoma was still theirs. Oh, yeah. And it changed all sorts Creek, of things. Cherokee, Cherokee Seminole. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Choctaw, Choctaw and Chickasaw. Chickasaw. Yeah. That's right. And so uh, all of these these people who had been prosecuted in state court who were in Oklahoma State Prison were now getting their cases undone because they were Native American and they had committed their crime on Native American land. And so they had to be re-prosecuted in federal courts in Oklahoma. How, how old were some of these convictions? I mean, 20 years, yeah. 25 years, murder cases, sexual assault cases. I, 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 can, uh, I, I can tell you that that is not a popular p- policy with everybody in Oklahoma. I don't know how it sat with you. You know, I'm an outsider. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, you know, the only reason I ended up there is because when Yvonne Rosales was firing all of my coworkers and colleagues and, and everybody here was scrambling to find new jobs, the Department of Justice put out a request nationwide saying mm. we need violent crime prosecutors in Oklahoma as quickly as possible wow. to handle these literally thousands of cases yeah. that were getting undone. And um, I said... That's me. I, I'm a violent crime prosecutor, and they were actually looking for lawyers to do one-year stints. They said, we can't guarantee you a position more than one year. I said, that, that's perfect. I'll, I'll, I can be in Muskogee for a year. <laughs> At least 11 months. Right, right. <laughs> and so I did that and then, uh, you know, started looking to come home. I mean, I was always planning to come home. And there was a posting for the public defender's office. A few of my colleagues, uh, including my best friend, um, they had become public defenders uh, once they left the DA's office. And a few of them told me, you should really check this out. It's really important. My, it, it has opened our eyes. And if you want to run for DA again, you need to see what it's like being a defense lawyer. Okay. And so I applied. And, and actually, from what I have heard, it was a somewhat contentious process in the public defender's office. Some folks in the office did not want to hire me. Why? I guess this perception that I was a, a career prosecutor, that I, I didn't know what it would be like, that I couldn't sympathize with, with hmm. clients, with people accused of crimes. But I'm very grateful to Kelly Childress. She's the head public defender. Her management team, they gave me the opportunity. They said, you know, he wants to see what it's like. We're going to show him. And uh, like I said, it, it has been very eye-opening. It, it, you know, it, being a defense lawyer, uh, having to... to to speak with clients and and inform folks about their rights and and the very serious accusations that are against them. It's been, uh, it's certainly given me a greater appreciation for, for that side of the bar. Uh, so your your opponent is the incumbent, although uh, appointee, right. uh, Bill Hicks, the right. district attorney. We know Bill. Uh, this is one of those races where I feel like, well, both candidates are, are qualified and would do a good job. So there, there's that. How would you differentiate yourself from Mr. Hicks? Yeah, so... Right now, Buzz, there is a critical and, and severe staffing shortage in the DA's office. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think uh, I think Mr. Hicks would agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, I'm not sure that he would. Okay. He, All right. he, Explain that. Then. You know, he tells folks, and and he's put it on his campaign literature that the, that that they're fully staffed, that everything is a okay, and things are on the right track. And you're saying that is not the case. No. Mm. No. I mean, right now the turnover is is just as high 
uh, as it was in the middle of the Rosales administration. I mean, there are people, Buzz, in the DA's office right now who tell me that morale is just as bad now as it was under Rosales. Mm -hmm. That, um, you know, people are leaving every week, every month, and, and the turnover is really high. People are feeling overwhelmed, overworked. They don't feel like they're getting the training or the support I, that they need. I'm taking mental notes yeah. because Mr. Hicks is going to be here tomorrow. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, people are very disappointed by some of the personnel choices that he's brought in. Um, you know, apparently his chief of staff, his number two, it terrorizes uh, the office. Right. Uh, they feel very uncomfortable working with him. Um, and so the, the morale is not well. And um, there are not enough people there to handle the cases that are happening. Mm -hmm. So I, like I looked at the number, 95% of the cases in the criminal justice system are, are dealt with without a trial. They're either pled guilty or sure. a dismissal. Mm -hmm. I looked at the numbers for this year, the felony domestic violence cases, because it's Domestic Violence Awareness Month. They dismiss more cases than they get guilty pleas on. So over 50% of the felony domestic violence cases are dismissed. But isn't that kind of normal for a lot of DA offices around the country? You try and come to something without it having to go to trial, yes, for instance? that is totally true. But I will tell you, when they're dismissing 50%, over 50%, that tells me either they're filing bad cases, right? Where you're charging cases that are bad, that you should be what we would call decline means you don't even file charges mm -hmm. in the first place. Okay. Or th they're not being handled correctly. And you say it's a manpower issue. Correct. Okay. Well, thank you, James, for coming in today. I feel like I've gotten to know you a little bit. Yes, sir. It's been a lot of fun. Pleasure. And uh, I, I guess I'll say this to everybody, every candidate who comes through these doors, good luck Thanks. on November 5th. I appreciate All it. Right. Yeah. Early voting's happening now. Yeah, it's I'm happening sure next week. This weekend, Buzz, just to be clear, sure. this, this Saturday, Sunday, they're the only weekend to vote early. Mm -hmm. So if you're working during the week, you can't get out to a voting site this weekend. Right. They cut off, uh, I don't know what the exact date is, but they're going to cut off early Next voting Friday. on Friday. Next Friday. Let's go today. Come on, let's go. Uh, yeah, you know, I've been having my eyes open. I think what I'll do, because early voting, you can vote anywhere. Right? Anywhere. Yeah. yeah. I'm just kind of looking for a big place, you know, yeah. that's like... Vote a key, and I will. So you can vote <laughs> at the, the, the Union down the street at UTEP yeah. or Sunland Park Mall. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Right. Uh, well, thank you, James, very yep. much. Appreciate you coming by today. Thanks, Buzz. Thanks, Ingo. Appreciate it. Find out what's going on. Quirky facts about our region. Urgent things you need to know impacting your drive. And, of course, nothing but El Paso's best rock. Oh, candy down uh, today because we want to see you in a Petri Kia. Credit approval required. Do you want to hear something really scary? KLAQ Morning Show with Buzz Adams is back. No, God, please, no, no. El Paso's Rock Monster. No! 95.5 KLAQ. Wow, we really are all in on Halloween already. Well, good. Yeah, we're a week away. We, just almost, almost a week. Or a little more than a week, actually. Uh, our guest today has a podcast called Rebel Spirit. I've been listening to it. I haven't finished it, so no spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> we have Akila Hughes, who is a podcaster, comedian, author. She was on podcasts that was very popular, called What a Day. Hi, Akila. Hi, good morning. How Hi are there. you? Hey. So, uh, the premise is you go back to your high school after uh, 15, 20, 15 years, want them to change the mascot because they're the rebels. I know that's just touching the surface. Can you give go a little more in-depth for us? Totally. So I'm from Florence, Kentucky, which is the north of south. It's about 10 minutes south of Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, my high school mascot was a Confederate general named Mr. Rebel. Our team was the huh. rebels. Um, you know, light stuff. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, my intention is really to change the mascot. With the podcast, we're hoping to change it to the Biscuits, which is something right. that the South can be proud of, um, that everyone in the South can be proud of. I think everybody, even vegetarians, can well, get biscuits, on board. Yeah. Biscuits. 
Exactly. Who doesn't love them? They're warm. Mm-hmm. They're welcoming. If, these, if somebody brought them out, you'd have one, you know? I got, I got a question uh, real quick uh, as we're going to... Kentucky didn't secede from the Union in the Civil sure War. They, they, I mean, <laughs> they, had, they were a slave-owning state, but they didn't secede from the Union. They weren't yeah. technically rebels, right? Exactly. They didn't <laughs> want that talk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Stolen valor, if you think about it. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, they really didn't. And that's what I think makes it, I mean, one of the many things that makes it very fascinating to sort of parse through why they think it's a good mascot for the area anyway. Uh, I was I was uh, listening to your podcast. I'm not that familiar with Florence, but actually I am because when you, when I found out your high school was Boone County, I'm familiar with Boone County because... Oh, yeah. You know why? Because there was... No. One of my friends told me, you got to watch this documentary about this crazy family in Boone County, Kentucky called The Wonderful and Wild, The Wild and Wonderful Whites of Boone County. Have you ever heard of oh, that before? No, and I'm <laughs> writing it down immediately. <laughs> yeah, you got to go see it. These people are something else. And uh, I, you're really a suburb, though. If you're 10 minutes from Cincinnati, you're a suburb of a, of a major American city. Oh, exactly. Yeah. And that's what I think, I mean, one of the main things that comes through is that this is a very diverse area. You know, Cincinnati attracts people from all over the world. Um, and, you know, even though Kentucky, especially once you get towards Boone County, starts to be a little bit more rural, it's very suburban. You know, the main attraction was a mall, which brought people <laughs> from all over the South and the North. So um, it used it to is- be the Florence Mall, but it's now tell them why it's 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 now the Florence Y'all. Yes. So um, Florence, Kentucky uh, is on I-75 South, a huge highway. If you've ever driven from Michigan to Florida, it is the main highway. And um, we have a giant water tower. I mean, enormous. You've never seen anything like it, I promise you. Oh, wow. (laughs) Red and white striped, and it says Florence Y'all, because uh, it initially said Florence Mall, but you can't advertise on... Uh, public work. You also can't have letters that big. And so sort of in a fit of, uh, fit of panic, the uh, Kentucky decided, okay, well, let's just paint over the sides of the M and make it say y'all. Right. Somebody it, had to shimmy up that water tower with a bucket of white paint <laughs> and adjust the word so it said Florence y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Which actually wild. seems kind of, you know, from what I'm learning about Florence from listening to your podcast, that sounds kind of like the mood. Yay, y'all. Right? Yeah, you know? exactly. It's not a terrible are, place, is it? Not at all. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't, I, I love going home. I think that, um, I think the South generally is overlooked and in many ways misunderstood, mm. but I, I love it. And I think that it has more potential than anywhere I've ever lived. Akila, I'm wondering, did you get any pushback from people who want? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is imagine. the point. Is no, it, I'm yeah, getting no, to that in the podcast. Oh, right okay. Now. That's so funny. I you know everybody loved it. No kidding. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely pushback. And I would say it's probably who you would expect. People mm. who, you know, older individuals who have lived in the area for 70 years who... I grew up um, with this. Exactly. This is our rebel and you're trying to take our history. And, you know, that's really not the case. I think that we can honor history and tell the truth, but also just look at the demographic of the school, you know, like most of these kids most of these older white people who are upset about it have black grandkids now like mm. let's just be honest about the way the country <laughs> yeah moving. yeah i've heard more and more i can't be racist i have black br- grandkids and i'm like well i'm not sure that's the standard uh to make right. you not racist <laughs> right and if so like maybe listen to them yeah, because yeah. when we talk to those black grandkids they're like we don't know what the rebel is supposed to be we don't identify with it the school has already gotten rid of the physical mascot, so there just doesn't seem to be a uh, reason to keep I it. I want to ask you about the physical mascot, so I, I want to make sure I'm understanding this. This is uh, Akila Hughes, and our podcast right now is called Rebel Spirit. They didn't have, like, a student dressed up in a in a poofy like. mascot <laughs> until you were in high school? Well, that's the thing. So they had one in the 90s, and then kind of oddly in Cincinnati there was this police brutality incident. And so things got very tense where I'm from. And I think as a response to that, they got rid of the Confederate flag on the gym floor and they got rid of Mr. Rebel. But then my senior year in 2005, at the last pep rally of the year, they just brought him back. And we were all like, what? (laughs) 
Let him go. And it was uh, it was like a pep rally where they introduced him as like, look, we brought the rebel <laughs> dude back. Yes, and it was, I mean, a mix, mixed reviews, you know All what right. I mean? Scattered applause. Now, we're getting to the point where I do not want to have the rest of it spoiled for me, so you've got to listen to uh, Rebel Spirit on your own. But I will say, uh, when I was listening to it, I thought I had a pretty brilliant idea. And All right. if you've talked to any members of the nerd community, uh, maybe they've said the same thing. Uh, any school where it's the Rebels, anything the Rebels, change the affiliation for the Confederacy. Are you doing a Star Wars? Yeah, it's a Star Absolutely. Wars. You're, you're I those. felt it coming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, instead of the stars and bars, you have that signet of the, of yeah. the yeah, rebellion, the stars right? stars and wars. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, yeah, we're Rebels, just like Luke Skywalker. Yeah. And but then you would have to face the Empire every year. <laughs> right, right. You know, it's, it, they all come with their own... Uh, Pros and cons. <laughs> I, I don't know if your biscuit proposal has been adopted. I don't want to know. I mean, I, I, because I'm, I'm, in vet, I'm not going to look it up, but I think everybody else, if you want to find out the answer, are is the Boone County High School, are they now the biscuits? I can't wait to find out. Yeah. All right. Akilla, yes. Thank you very much. Appreciate the Thanks podcast. Appreciate me. you. Yeah, thank seriously. you very much. Thanks, we'll, we'll guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Here's to fall. Maybe all the falling leaves will cover up your neighbor's political... Talented candidates. Visit them slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. Live from the KLAQ studios, the Buzz Adams Morning Show. Courtesy of Glasheen, Vias, and Enderman Personal Injury Lawyers. At GVILaw.com. Is this, a, is this a new bumper bed? It is, yeah. Is it Depeche Mode? No. No. God, Nico, stop talking about Depeche Mode. You know it upsets me when you do. <laughs> I, I'm not the only one. I, 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 I'm interested. Joanna, do you know this song? <laughs> I do, yeah. All she wants to do is dance and make, make romance. romance. Who sings she this? Party. She likes to get down. a lot of the Coyote Ugly soundtrack. <laughs> it sounds like old people music. <gasps> it's Don Henley. How dare uh, you? It's definitely old people yeah, music. The Eagles, so. <laughs> even, the, even Dude Lebowski didn't like the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> hey, somebody else is uh, talking about Depeche Mode. I'm not the only one, Joanna. Ugh, Nico. Do you want to hear, do you hear him? Okay. Do you want to hear what he says? Yeah. This is just for you. For me. Good morning, morning show. Hi. So I'm 40 years old. And I've heard you guys talk about Depeche Mode. I've heard of Depeche Mode and never really quite listened to their music. And anyways, yesterday I got introduced to Depeche Mode, <laughs> to their music for the first time. Oh. And damn, they're good, man. <laughs> their music, especially uh, that song, Every Enjoy the Silence. <laughs> yeah, I have that song on repeat and... And I've listened to the other music, and man, they're good. <laughs> no, yeah, they're great. My, my, my phone, and it's a default thing, plays a Depeche Mode song, but, like, it's one of the chimes. Uh, uh, really? Are you? Who's playing this? Me. Oh, nice. Yeah. Shut up, Nico. I cannot believe Nico has a Depeche Mode I got, like, shirt. some... How did I... Okay, it's like a... You don't even know how you got it. It's like, what? Is it like a super secret, like, tour shirt? No, it's from the most recent tour that I couldn't get tickets for. Well, I went on it. And I don't know how... Nico doesn't even know how he got it. I really don't. Uh, enjoy the silence. is great, yeah. Every time my f I have to locate my phone, he goes... Oh, just can't get enough. enough. I just can't get yeah. <laughs> But speaking of uh, of music, uh, oh, first of all, a lot of people had uh, wanted me to tell you that there's a lot. Uh, you can pull anywhere. You don't have to go where your uh, assigned oh, location, location, your precinct up. is. You can pull. No, I know. I knew that. Steve told me that yesterday. I think somebody did. You can go to any of the polling places during early voting. Er, last day for early early voting is a week from tomorrow. Yes. And um, somebody messaged us. I've asked my teenager to turn the radio down, and he thought it was so funny. I referred to his speaker as a radio. <laughs> he told me I sounded old. 
Well, was he listening to us? He was just, uh, uh, he was just, he wasn't listening to the radio. Oh, oh, okay. he just had uh, a, he, he just was had, just listening to music on a stereo. He's, Turn yeah. your radio down. Yeah. And he, he thought it was hilarious because she made her sound a little other than him. Uh, Steve is here. Kaplowitz. I'm a big, stupid jerk. The Buzz Adams Morning Show presents Go Sports Go. Brought to you by the Viva Auto Group. Viva makes it happen. It is time for Go Sports Go with Steve Kaplowitz. Good morning, Steve. Yo, yo, good morning. How's everybody doing? Doing fantastic. World Series oh, starts fantastic. tomorrow, man. It does. Mm. I'm ready. What about you? Uh, first two games, in, w- 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 where are the first two games going to be? Uh, first two games are going to be at Dodger Stadium. Dodger Stadium. Chavez By the way, I've been, Ravine. I've been hearing that uh, just the buy-in to get into the games, like the worst seats, fifteen hundred bucks to twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah, it's a lot of money, man. Who has that money? Well, actually, it's well, LA. I a mean, lot that, of people have that money. That doesn't. You com- have that money, Buzz. That doesn't compare to what uh, a Super Bowl ticket goes for, though. I mean, those those can be. Well, but the Super Bowl is one game. One game. This right? is a best Understood. four out of seven. So I'd love to see the Yankees and the Dodgers. Who knows if it's going to be another 40 years before yes, they play each other in another, right. su- in another World Series. I mean, listen, they're two great teams, so it's very possible that this is the start of a nice little you know rivalry like we had in the late 70s. Remember, they played in 77, 78, and 81, which is... You know, that was that was the peak. That was like we talked about that earlier in the week. That was like Reggie Jackson for the Yankees, Lou Pinella, Chris Chambliss, you know, Thurman Munson, Catfish Hunter, Dodgers had Steve Garvey, Ron Say. They had Fernando in 81. Mm-hmm. They, um, they had Jerry Royce. R.I.P. Fernando. Oh, that's right. They, you know, they had, they, had, they had great pitchers, great players. It was so much fun. Was good How stuff. about Jim Carver? Did they have Jim Carver? Who is Jim Carver? I don't you mean know. Tim McCarver? Tim McCarver. Tim McCarver. <laughs> yeah, that's that's <laughs> like Jim Carver. That's a new <laughs> one. Tim McCarver. Oh yeah. Now Tim McCarver played for the uh, for, for the Cardinals and then later the Phillies and he might have. I don't think he played for the Yankees um, or the Dodgers end of his career, but you know, look, there was a lot of stars, a lot of great players. Remember Steve Garvey? He was on the Dodgers back in those days. You had Pedro Guerrero, Kenny Landro. It was a good, it was good teams. Uh, all right, World Series gets started tomorrow. There's something very important in the NFL we need to talk about. Aaron Rodgers is defending himself and saying, without any exception, he did not eat. A booger. Well, not just that. So remember yesterday we were saying, like, <laughs> doesn't he look doesn't he look so stupid trying to put the water bottle through his helmet to drink it? And we were like, does he not get that it won't fit? But it wasn't for drinking, right? It oh, turns out what was it? It was uh, he put smelling salts in. That's what, okay, oh, that's what I thought bottle. it was. That made water that made more sense because it looked like it was in near his nose. Round peg, square hole. Yeah. Uh, here's Aaron Rodgers on Pat McAfee show saying uh, it it might look incriminating. I've actually never eaten my boogers. That's one thing I'm very proud of. It's a tough look to try and defend because that video is a little incriminating. But I can tell you that there needs to be a side view that shows that there wasn't a boog that actually went in the mouth. Yeah, it's a bad look. <laughs> yeah, it's a bad look. He's he's kind of you know he's kind of doing that with his nose and then yeah. his fingers went. Well, close it, enough. Close. close enough to his mouth to make people question, but he says not a booger eater. Booger Never eater. been. Pumpkin eater. Uh, I got it. Uh, <laughs> That's a great clip. <laughs> <That's> so funny. <laughs> yeah. Also, oh. Jason Kelsey yesterday uh, had to take to the airwaves to explain that he was not caught sleeping at a Taylor Swift concert. He says he wasn't, and oh. he offers the proof. If you zoom in on my right hand, my hand is hovering. You can't sleep with your hand hovering above your knee. It's impossible. And you know I play jazz. Sometimes when you close your eyes. Dude, I'm, every jazz solo I ever saw you play. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Kelsey is a jazz musician? What the hell? I think, what, do you play cowbell or something? Or, do, do you have any idea? No, I have no clue. Does it ever Funny weird that. you out to find out that like some athletes are, have other talents? Oh, there's a lot of uh, athletes that are musicians. That is not a. Uh, there's a lot of baseball players that are musicians and other you know sports that have played. So yeah, that, that doesn't surprise me. Didn't Wayman Tisdale Wayman play Tisdale the? Uh, was whole, a, he was, played the saxophone, right? I think Wayman might have been a bass player. Really, like, but thought, he put out albums. Yeah, I thought he, like jazz albums, good albums. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, in the jazz section of like record stores and stuff. That's right. So. That's right. So I mean, that's what I'm saying. There are definitely uh, certain athletes that are very musically inclined, or at least more musically inclined than others. So I would but agree. But you with that. can't say what you don't know what. Uh, I've never heard of Jason what Kelsey. instrument Jason Kelsey no, plays. I never, never knew that at all. I got to find this thing because it's uh, a couple of. Uh, oh man, yeah, I got I got to open this up. Uh, Paul George thinks. Did you hear that the, in the NFL there's a move underway from the Players uh, Association yeah. to ban journalists, men and women, from the locker room because it's uncomfortable for the players? Um, we've been Tory, talking about this for now, two weeks. Well, Tory listen. Smith, who is a former uh, Ravens receiver, said that there are a lot of meat watchers uh, in <laughs> right. the locker room. I was wondering if you'd heard the term <laughs> meat watcher. Let me just jump in here. This is Paul yes. George, okay? So yeah. he's an NBA player, wasn't it? Is he still in? He's still in the league. Okay. And dignity. What do you think about that? Um, I didn't see that, but I I agree. So, P, other players chimed in with some very, very interesting tweets. And uh, one former wide receiver, Torrey Smith, tweeted, and I quote, pause, if only y'all knew how awkward some of the male reporters act. Straight meat watchers. I want your perspective on this, Steve. You've been you've been in plenty of locker rooms. Right. Do, do you know what he's talking about? As a former meat watcher, <laughs> let's put it this way: he's watched more meat than a USDA inspector. <laughs> so here's the thing I'll say about locker rooms. That's good. That's good. That's tell good. tell nice. your Robert Parrish story now. <laughs> yeah, I should probably. All right, so. This goes back to like 1992 or 1993. All right, I'm in college. I'm like 20 years old and um, going to cover Spurs games when I was at UT. And we worked at the student radio station. The Spurs gave us media access. And one of the games I watched was the Celtics. It was the Celtics and the Spurs. It was the year right after Larry Bird retired. So I missed Bird by a year. Yeah. But they still had McHale. They still had Parrish. Probably DJ. I'm uh, Probably DJ. They had Reggie Lewis. Mm. They were very, very, they were still very good. Anyway, after the game, um, Robert Parrish uh, is doing his interview and he's- In the locker room. In the locker room. Now, and so the, 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 the athletes have no compunction about taking off their shirts. Uh, that was always my impression. I always thought that they just did it without any- yeah. self-consciousness at all. Is that what That's the, 100% the, the correct. experience with, Mr., with so, the chief was? So let me say this about the chief. So here's what he did. Okay, so he comes into the locker room and he's got no shirt and he's got a towel around his waist. Okay. Okay, so right. he sits down in his chair and he's getting ready to do the interview. Before it starts rolling, he says, wait, please. So as he's getting ready to start, he um, takes out a uh, little tub of Vaseline and he starts Vaselining his balls <laughs> like i'm serious that is what he's doing he's oh he is actually doing that hey, during... we're, we're gonna assume that you're yes. talking about his the basketballs but yes. i know what you're his saying basketballs. Yeah. his oh basketballs oh my so a little double uh, dribble going on yes anyway this was during <laughs> he was not known interview. as a great ball handler uh you know, right <laughs> there, so. during the interview <laughs> so he's talking and as he's talking i look at one of the other guys who's an older journalist and he and he's giving me the same face like what, what is hell? going on so here's the deal nobody's staring down there you're looking at robert parrish in the, in the eye in the eyes in the eye. as much as you can you have to you have to don't break eye contact yeah. it might bite you well, like so this story gets like better be, being attacked by a lamprey so, <laughs> so he talks for two to three minutes and when he finishes and he's done he offers his hand oh, to shake oh, the no. hands of journalists no and he just did the thing that is hilarious and i think yeah. she's did what they he was shake doing. Hands? He did. Oh no, no, I don't know if anybody did. We all got out of there. I was like, that is just no thanks. Appreciate it. And, and that. that's when you we knew him, you want to do this yeah. forever. We gave him the little <laughs> we gave him the little wave hey, saying, hey, Thanks, Chief. Yeah, thanks. thanks, Chief. Appreciate that. Uh yeah, what but a that story. Was, that was the uh, true story. Let's listen into Paul George a little more. Let's do it. That was a real tweet. So what? it sounds like there's some iffy stuff going around the whole NFL with this meat watcher, you know. Oh, yeah, they gotta stop conspiracy. <laughs> no, nah, there's some honest truth to that. Um <laughs> There was an incident, and there was even way back, you know, my time of being in the NBA where guys would talk about this situation. And there was a reporter in Washington that would look at dude, like stare at dude's meat, like <laughs> while they're in the house or while they're like, you know, changing. And you got to understand, bro, like the game might be over 
And 10 minutes after that, all the reporters are coming in, right? And immediately after the game, like, you're not showering right away. You know what I mean? Like, you might take a second to kind of process what just happened. So anyway, Paul George says that he had concern about meat watchers. That's creepy, dude. Like, like, okay, so I thought thought they were completely nonplussed. Like, so free of any self uh, self. Uh, consciousness at all that they just it didn't bother. so when we would go into locker rooms after Spurs games and again this is 30 30 plus years ago um, number were they one, letting female reporters in at that they point? were yeah. they were and there were players naked there were players wrapped in towels they were going back and forth between the showers and their lockers even if you didn't play and, sports you've seen a movie about sports where the guys are in the locker room yes. a lot of bare asses and Come most and, and, and those always are gross and most of the um and and most of the athletes were like so uh, everybody was just used to the drill like we all knew if they're going to shower well we couldn't get them until they were done showering and then a lot of the players would say let me let me put on some clothes and when i'm dressing and i'm or i'm getting dressed then we'll talk so How about that but do would they coaches let... ever do that? No. In fact, um, no. I used to. Why see... would they need to shower? Well, I will say this. I can remember talking to a very famous basketball coach while he was getting dressed one time. Don Haskins? I don't want to say. Oh, man. So, <laughs> but, hey, like hey I was talk saying, about his bear. Completely without any, you know, it just. Yes. It was no big deal. It was no big deal. It was no I'm not, I'm, big deal. I'm not saying it was no. I'm, you it, know, I'm, it was a big deal. I mean, it was <laughs> a very deal. big deal. <laughs> Listen, you weren't I mean, meat watching, were you? No, no, wasn't meat watching. Meat although, watching. I say, although I will Joanna's say, although I will say, Joanna's a meat watcher. Let me, Certified let me, meat let me, let me get, I'm a meat watcher. I got a better story. Watching meat go by. So one year I'm going to spring my, training. Oh You'll like this story too. I, I needed to interview. I needed to interview some Dodger players back in the day, right? So and this is when we were Dodger affiliates. It's before 2014. So um, I wanted my wife to help me out in the locker room. Uh, because, Wait, what? <laughs> oh my god! Let me, let me explain why. Because I knew. Because I knew. Yeah. So I had the Vaseline and certain players. See pornos and stuff that way. Well, I always anyway. say pornos, but yeah. So she said no, right? She said no. She didn't want to do it. Oh, no. But, but her best friend who lived in Phoenix said, I'll go. I what? Said, Great. And that so, was a girl? Oh, yeah. And uh, I'd like to meet her. Yeah. So you've met her. Anyway, um, <laughs> she's in the locker room with me. And Matt Kemp, who was one of the biggest Dodger players at that time, yeah, sure. was, in his, Kemp, was in his locker after the game. And again, getting dressed or naked. I forget what it was. Anyway, when it came to the In the, the process of getting yes, dressed. And it came to the interviewing, uh, he was very friendly with her. And she <laughs> was uh, you know, talking to him. And, and by the way, we ended up getting everything we needed from Matt. He gave us great 600 ESPN El Paso liners for Dodger baseball. He did the interview. And afterwards, she kept talking about, wow, like, uh, like she, she said, I'll do that again. She was, uh, she really enjoyed it. Will and, you and write down, way, if you're not willing to tell me who it is, will you write down on a piece of paper who it is? Oh, my God, sure. was. Anyway. Wait, so even if women can go to the locker rooms and then the guys. That was kind of controversial when it happened, but I thought the yeah. attitude was like, we are professional journalists just like the men. You mean I could just walk into that locker room? Well, if you ask her about that story, Steve. all these years later, she will tell you that that was one of the best uh, experiences okay. <laughs> she had had in a uh, in a uh, locker for professional athletes. She had a good time. So Does it ring a bell? She lives in Phoenix, yeah, not in no. El Paso. Yeah. My wife's uh, best friend. Her name was Nina Hartley. No, <laughs> nice try. But anyway, to make a long her. story short, um, you know, she wasn't. I even said to her, I said, "Did it? Uh, did it like bother you that you know he was pretty much naked?" She goes, "No, I didn't care, and uh, it didn't bother him." Was she a big so, Dodger fan or something? After that, she was, I'm sure. Let me think about that question for a second. No. Was he right, rubbing pine tar on his bat or anything while he was talking to you? Um, he probably was. Um, who remembers? It was Did such it a long time like ago. Did it seem like he was flexing? He might have. Uh, he he might have been uh, flexing for her. It's possible. This so, isn't sexy, Joanna. This is just like the YMCA. All right. Anyway, long story short, females have been going into <laughs> locker rooms for a long, long time. Uh-huh. Some players don't care. Others do. And, uh, you know, um, and apparently we have plenty of male journalists that are meat watchers. That's what we've learned about the uh, locker I love, room story. I love how Buzz asked about the coaches. Like, the coaches shower up every... Like, they don't <laughs> they don't sweat when they're out I've there. Seen, I've seen coaches getting, you know... Uh, trust me. They get heated <laughs> it, up, too. It happens. 
Some of the coaches sweat more than some of the players. Like some of the guys who never get off the bench, and the coach is out there waving his arms around. And <laughs> I can see maybe Bobby, N- Bobby Knight after throwing around Rick some. Rick Pitino back in uh, the day? Yeah. That's, that's, that's. Mike Krzyzewski? Krzyzewski. <laughs> hey, by the way, I have not been into a locker room in about 20 years, so I don't know what's happened recently. You just, just said, you just said Adrian now? Yeah, exactly. I don't, uh, yeah, because now I've, I've kind of transitioned from going into locker rooms. Now I take my son back to the car and we go, uh, we go home after games. So that's uh, kind of my, my new thing. Is a UTEP quarterback whose who's last name, his Christian name, it, is Christian name your last name or your first name? What does that mean, Christian name? I don't know. It's a term. You don't know, you never heard that. It, it, do we have a quarterback whose name is Pickles? Yes, Last name, yes, Pickles. Pickles, and is he we gonna... also have a we also have a kicker named Buzz, Buzz Flaviano, and we also have a running back named Jolly. First name or last name? Last name. Oh, it's okay. Jolly. Is Pickles going to be in the starting position when the Miners play the next time? Well, that's a week from Saturday, okay. and it all depends on how they practice. And mm-hmm. we also don't know if uh, Skyler will be back from his concussion. Skyler got concussed yes. in a targeting hit that uh, got yes. the player ejected from the game. It was. It was blatant enough that that player for uh, Louisiana Tech, there might even be like a like a suspension to follow up. Oh, it's very possible, very very possible. So we'll see if that happens or not. In fact, Skyler's father was very upset about the hit and went on Twitter and threatened the player. And later, took down his tweets, Ooh. but it was uh, it was very um, it was very awkward. Let's just put it that way. Like I get it, you're mad, your son just got blown up, but um, when. The, uh, when you know the dad uh, right. says, "I hope you snap your bleeping leg this season to the oh, football player." That's, uh, that's probably not gonna... the right way to be talking to a kid. Yeah, right? and I little... still consider college age. I still consider that a kid. I would probably say the same. Thing. Okay, so uh, that's, Steve, that's let's uh, let's go ahead. Hey, we got and, Thursday night football tonight. Yeah, Thursday night football. Let's talk about that. Are you going to be out? I'll be out at um, Speaking Rock tonight right. from four to uh, six twenty, and uh, we'll be carrying the Vikings and the Rams tonight. And you know what that means, right? If the Vikings are playing, that means Aaron, Aaron, Jones, Aaron Jones is playing. So, yeah, that, that, I'm excited about that. The Vikings lost their first game of the season. They did. Didn't they? But they have to bounce the, back tonight. That's they, right. They're at the Rams. But they did. They lost to the Lions. Aaron very Jones good put game. in some, some hard running, man. Aaron, Aaron Jones, Jones is had still a, doing it at a very, very high level. He's had a great season so far for the Vikings. Uh, he's been uh, their do-it-all guy, and uh, I'm excited about that. In fact, let me say this. If you uh, want to have some fun and also enjoy a, a very easy way to cash in on all your favorite athletes' performances, underdog fantasy is the way to go. In fact, I'm going to tell you right now, I've got the app open. I'm looking at the picks called Skull. Skull is the Vikings uh, slogan when they're winning. You say Skull. When you're drinking. That that too. (laughs) That too. So anyway, Aaron Jones is part of the Skull entry. It's higher than 15 and a half for his longest rush. I love that. And I feel like it's so easy to play, folks. You can win up to a thousand times your money just by choosing higher or lower on player stats like we mentioned. I I heard the over-under for Shohei Otani is half a home run. Higher than half a home run. That is correct. If he hits a home run. Yes, you win. Mm -hmm. Just like that. They put the power to cash out in your hands. But you could bet on the under as well, right? You can do that. You can go lower. It's not under. Lower. Higher. Lower. Get the terminology. We've been doing this for four weeks. But they're (laughs) underdog. Right. So they should call it the over-under. No. Oh, is there a legal reason? Yes. I have no idea. That. There you go. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Higher or lower. <laughs> I tell you, I've been uncomfortable with this for a while. I can tell. <laughs> I can tell. With Underdog's double flex option, you can even take two L's and still have your entry to be a win. All right, I talked about uh, Aaron Jones. Let me tell you this, folks. This season, Underdog uh, is going to be running a special promo or bonus almost every single day. And it's currently boost over from now until October 27th. You can boost your profit on all NBA entries by 20%. Underdog is literally giving you unlimited profit boosts to make basketball picks. Download the app. Sign up with this promo code. K-L-A-Q, and deposit now to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash instantly. That's promo code K-L-A-Q. Must be 18 plus and present in a state where underdog fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org. Thank you, Steve. Hey, 
it's Daniel Paulus. I'll be along starting at 3 with everything from Led Zeppelin to Soundgarden. Of course. APR is annual for system group. Credit interest continues to accrue on 90 days. No pay. Based on the change for the notice. Refinancing does not apply to existing one-source auto loan. See credit union for details. The Buzz Adams Morning Show. Monday through Friday, 5 to 10. KLEQ and KLEQ HD1 El Paso. A town square media station. What a busy show we've had. Let's just recap real quick. What Uh, a fun, fun show. El Paso sheriffs are having a party this weekend, and it's free at Escarity Lake. There's going to be a zombie race, bands, food and drink, appropriate for all ages at Escarity Park. Uh, Then uh, candidate for district attorney, James Montoya, came by. Then we interviewed Akila Hughes, who's the host of the Rebel Spirit podcast. And then Cappy came in. And Carlos might show up. N- not getting a, a response there? Uh, you know what? He just texted me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, well, we're back. So, however that turns out. You want to go in, right into news, or did you have a couple of things? I, I have a couple of things I wanted to do. All right. Um, All right. Let's okay. do them then. So, a lot of people still calling uh, left us tons of uh, app chat messages and neckline calls about the pettiest reason. Okay. Well, I've they, got one of those. Uh, well, wait, but that's not the one I'm going to play. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, somebody uh, left a very uh, nice message for us. Um, let me Whenever just Whenever you're ready. Thank you. But uh, what do you just want to let everybody know what, what our topic was that uh, people called in with? The the petty? Yeah, what was yeah, the pettiness. Uh people on Reddit were saying the pettiest reason that they'd ever broken up or not dated somebody or only had one date and no more. And there were things like he had a Velcro wallet. <laughs> what what else? He took me to see Gemini Man instead of Joker. <laughs> <laughs> and he liked it. And he liked Gemini Man. He liked Man. Gemini Man. <laughs> All right. Here is a neckline call we got uh yesterday. Hi, I just want to tell you guys what an awesome job you guys do. I love listening to you guys in the morning. Um, I've been listening to Buzz for years. Uh, I just turned 40 this year, and I can say that I've been listening to him all the way since middle school. Oh, I mean, no. it's been pivotal points in my life. And <laughs> it was always during, I was listening to Buzz show. Like, for instance, like when 9 11 happened, I found out about it because I was listening to the Buzz Adam show. Oh, wow. um, so, again, you guys are always doing awesome. and just a tidbit that I'm proud of is that now I got my kids to listen to the Kelly Q morning show. They even feel like they have a bad day when Nico and Buzz are fighting. So no more fighting, Buzz and Nico. Aww. No more. I went to go uh, give a check to uh, the plumber. The lady in the office. Wait, so uh, you, you have like, you're having uh, wait, so you're having rotor you had rotor rooter because are you still dealing with the issues from your flooded? Um, no, it's all done. But I got to give them the check that my insurance wrote. So. Right, because your, so your draw, water heater there, flooded the whole thing. There, and you there's use rotor one of our listers. I, I saw her the last time I went to Roto Rooter like three or four years ago, and I get a big hug, and she's like, "I just love the bromance you guys are having." <laughs> and I'm like, God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, whatever. So they're, there are my 40 year olds, 40 year olds who listen to me when they were children. That's the second time someone says, oh, I'm 40 years old and I've been listening. God, <laughs> I know. Isn't that hilarious? So how does that make you feel, Buzz? Old. <laughs> okay, then, Joanna, I don't know yeah. if you saw the, this. Uh, oh, dude, silence your tone, your alerts, man. Well, I need, stupid I, Teams thing, isn't it's it? A, it's the stupid going off with me Teams too. thing. It's the team thing. Yeah. Block them. Honestly, block them. That's our him. company. I blocked them. Nobody said anything to me. Oh, you're no, no, Buzz you're Adams. Buzz. They don't care about you. Okay, Joanna, this was from Fabs in the app chat. Uh-huh. And they write, uh, buzzards, nerds that listen to Buzz, parentheses, even when they haven't li- lived in El Paso since 2011, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. and they base their movie and TV selection off of the shows, that's you. And so then, this is a guy who says that's what his girlfriend texted him because he doesn't live here. He lives in Arizona. Yes, and he says, this is what my girlfriend texted me yesterday morning, that he's one of the nerds a, that a, listens a, to you. A, a, a nerd for buzz is a buzzerd. Is a buzzerd. Buzzerd. A buzzerd. A buzzerd. A buzzerd. 
Um, <laughs> did he go see Joker 2, Fall Do? Because as far as I know, I'm the only one who liked that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please don't base your movie and TV selections. No, no, do. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you think you have a nice critical eye for Absolutely. <laughs> And let me tell you another thing. Colin Farrell is making a serious case for maybe he should be my favorite actor. Just from his Penguin performance. No, not just. I mean, he's really good in everything in, in, he's in. In Daredevil, it was great. No, nah, that's not what I would bring. Minority <laughs> Report, he was great. <laughs> um, the Finger Cutting Off movie, he was pretty good. Finger Cutting Off movie? So the Banshees of... of Inner Sheeran. Oh, yeah, that one's yeah, pretty yeah. good. Sheeran My Fingers or whatever it is. <laughs> As he's gotten older, I think he's getting better as an actor. Oh, as the listen, and the penguin, this character is so compelling. It's he's somebody said that that the penguin uh, DC series on Max is too much like the Sopranos. I think it's the perfect amount like the Sopranos. And if Jimmy Gandolfini hadn't tragically passed away at a young age, this would have been a role he would have eaten up. You think so? Oh, just the way that he does it, and he has a few mannerisms that are Penguin-like. And by the way, he doesn't call himself Penguin. Penguin is what people call him to make fun of him because he's got, you know, he's got his hand, one of his hands is partially fused together, and he walks with a limp, which gives him kind of a waddle. But Farrell does this stuff that is very Penguin-like. It's just really great. But I was thinking... Five years down the road, ten years down the road, are people going to be calling him out for doing ugly face? <laughs> <laughs> like he took the job from somebody? Yeah. You know, there was an ugly actor out there who actually looked hideous. And it was taken by a handsome actor that, how dare you do ugly face in 2028 or whenever? Hmm. Do you think that's possible? No, I don't. I don't think any ugly people are going to be up in arms. First of all, we keep them down. We don't let them talk a lot. Hey. They're limited on what roles they can play. Anyway. Sorry, uggos. If you can find somebody so ugly that people would refer to him derisively as the penguin, doesn't that guy deserve the job? No, Colin Farrell does because he's killing it. You're right. You're right. Danny DeVito really deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> he's already deformed a little. <laughs> hey, um, so uh, th that could win. I don't know what it would be eligible for, but like in costume and makeup, I guess you know an uh, Emmy. Uh, Emmy. Yeah, Colin Farrell yeah. should win the Emmy. Uh, Severance is coming back on season Apple two. TV. Yep. Season two, it's been off for like two and a half years. I'll have to watch the first season again, or at least the last episode, to rem remind myself that that show is a trip, man. If you got Apple TV, watch the first season of Severance and get ready for season two. Uh, Joanna, are yes. you caught up on The Mass Singer? <gasps> yes, I am. Laverne Cox. Okay, maybe somebody hasn't seen it. No, yeah, I saw it last night. Oh, okay. And what was she? The chess piece. Oh. So she was dressed as something else, dressed as something, something else. else. Okay. A horse <laughs> dressed as a... <laughs> hey, so in our in our app chat, people are leaving. Uh, had left a bunch of the uh, petty things that they broke up with uh, people for. And Christy says, my pettiest reason for breaking up with someone was that he laughed like an idiot. And he laughed hysterically. <laughs> At things that were only mildly funny. <laughs> I couldn't stand it. You are that, like... That sounds terrible, Christy. She's not talking about me. No, no because I went, oh my God, were you dating about, Nisha? She's gotta be. That's the only person God. that could hear it. You are such an Arthur Fleck, though. Her response is funny, though. She's like, as I wrote this, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> Nico had a twin on the east side, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, hey, I can't help Gravy here again. Hearing your pettiest reason to break up with someone. I don't know if this is petty, but I had a girl one time insistent that her son come out on the first date with us. I said no. She said okay, but he still wants to meet you. <laughs> uh, that was the first and last date we had. Oh, my God. Oh my God that is so weird. Th look, it, if you date in El Paso... Uh, there's a chance you're going to date somebody who's already got a kid. Yeah, <laughs> that's big just, chance. That's just part of the, the way it goes. There's an appropriate time in any relationship, and it probably varies from relationship to relationship. Sure. But that would be kind of... On yeah. the first date, the first meeting, oh, meet Oh, he my still son. wants to meet you anyway. What? That is weird. Did he say how old the kid was? 
37. Uh, yeah, well, it could have been. <laughs> I'm picturing... Stop dating my mom. <laughs> um, uh, You're not my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Cowboy John in our app chat had a really funny one. He says, I broke up with my ex recently because she tried to show me how to properly wash my hands in her small sink, and she was upset that I splashed too much water. <gasps> I'm 40, not four. <laughs> Wait a minute. She thought he splashed too, too much, much water, water when he washed his hands. So she went and was like, let me show you how to wash your hands properly in this tiny sink. <gasps> Carlos says, I took her to watch Nacho Libre with me uh, when it first came out, and she called it a stupid movie. I took her straight home. Okay. Didn't then, even take her out to eat. And then I responded with, that's how I felt with the guy with Gemini Man. <laughs> so I was calling in about the um, pettiest reasons to not date somebody. So one of mine, there's a couple, one of mine was kind of the same. This dude had the same name as my mom. What? I, I just instantly, I couldn't do it. What? Uh, the dude's the name dude was Lupe? <laughs> <laughs> the other one. Yeah. He would literally flip out anytime something reggaeton related came up <laughs> to the point where like he would cause a scene and I just couldn't do it after that <laughs> when reggaeton came up imagine he's just like not this crap again daddy Yankee <laughs> I can keep playing these man these are great yeah, yeah I love yeah. Um, I had a, a woman that cut it off that uh, broke up because uh, I would not eat one kernel of popcorn at a time. I, I would. I thought you were going to say something else. Too much, and uh, and that turned her off. So, no more, no more uh, popcorn eating with her. All right. Good morning. Okay. Who regulates how you eat popcorn? Uh, All rules. My go out daughter the always has some comment. About how uh, you about, eat popcorn? Yeah. I've seen you eat popcorn. My handfuls are too big. Yeah, you should do something about I it. I get it on the front of my shirt. Oh, you are... You're like the... You're, <sighs> and I say... Dude, you're not the... like. Clean. It's going to fall off when I stand up. Also, I mean, and nobody can see it because we're in a movie you know, theater. Nico, you know how sometimes you cup the popcorn? Buzz just like... He just throws it, it like this. Ah. Yeah, just throws it straight into Open his face. Open hand, throws it into your face, hopefully hoping that it lands in your mouth. And Whatever get, sticks. I get it. Yeah. I get a, a half of it is on the floor. I get as big a handful as I can. We have to get a refill halfway through because Buzz threw half the popcorn on the floor. Oh, that, that I spilled no, it yeah. one time. <laughs> you should do. You should do something about how you eat popcorn. Uh, Caesar said, but I, "Who who would eat it? At, you don't eat it one kernel at a time. No hell no. That's so, onerous. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I." I like to nibble on it, one kernel. On one kernel? On just one little kernel. <laughs> hey, Caesar in the app chat says, petty reason, toe thumbs. You know, when the thumb looks like a toe. <laughs> <laughs> the thumb looks like a toe? Like a toe? I to Jenny has toe thumbs. I swear to God. <laughs> they, Jenny's toe. Thumbs she has some look messed like, up thumbs. <laughs> look up. Okay, look up. And this is maybe the most perfect woman ever, except for this one thing. Megan Fox has weird thumbs. Yes, she has toe Megan thumbs. Megan Fox has toe thumbs. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I'm fine with toe thumbs. You're fine with toe thumbs? Under those conditions. Oh, my God. I have Megan Fox thumbs. No. no hers hers look do. like maybe they got cut off and had to be reattached. Hastily. Yeah, it's where the nail is like real small. I have toe thumbs. No, you no not yes, compared to Megan's oh, You haven't seen my thumbs. Um, Fern in the app chat says her nips were too dark. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing to make me insecure about. Oh, I know, but I know the petty reason that you've uh, uh, broken up with somebody or, or didn't even date him. Who, me? Yeah. Well, oh, please what? don't share it. I want to know. There Tell was it. a girl that was really into him, uh -huh. and he was like... Now she's flat, dude. <laughs> no, I never said that. Oh, well, we all know how Buzz feels about I yabos. never would have said something like that. You didn't use the he words. You, you did like some gestures. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> now, look, Megan Fox's thumb is a horror show. A that's horror a toe thumb. show. Yeah, that's a toe thumb. Can you see it in there? That's a weird toe. That's, that's not, not a toe. toe. That's a that's thumb. That's her thumb. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you really don't. You really don't have thanks room for to complain. The point. Yeah. 
My bad. <laughs> All right. Beautiful woman that Megan Fox. Beautiful. Yeah. I want to mm. know what that guy's name was that she's like, it was the same name as my mom's. <laughs> she never explained that, did yeah. she? Gene, <laughs> you know, Terry, Tracy. Oh, maybe yeah, it, was it could be one of those. Pat. Hey, we, Pat. Got, we got a funny. Hi, uh, everybody. We got a funny neckline call. Oh. Go ahead. Got to take a break here soon. Hey, Mo Show, Edgar here. What's going on? First, at the beginning of the week, we got Donald Trump talking about Oliver Palmer's meat. Now we got Buzz talking about Coach Haskins meat. No, he wasn't. Come on now. Let's go. That's untrue. Yeah, well, I about- said I've been in a locker room where a coach was getting dressed before, <laughs> and Steve said Coach Haskins, and I, I declined to answer you know the question. You neither confirmed nor I'm denied. Right. <laughs> N- neither confirmed nor denied. So, did he live up to the bear nickname? No, come on, man. Okay. This guy is such a but respected icon was, in this town. Look at me and nod. I'm going to do this with my hand, and then you're going to tell me where to stop. No, I'm not doing that either. <laughs> stop. Well, I'm hey, doing no, that. I'm a serious question over. though. Uh, you you did have a good friendship with him, right? Pretty. <sighs> Coach yelled at me a lot. Oh, because you were the announcer for games, weren't yeah. you? <laughs> he yelled at you. <laughs> yeah, he had it. He had certain things he did not like. And certain that he would let you know. Do you guys look like at if I if somebody shot penises? three points and I went three? <laughs> don't do that. I hate that. I hate that. <laughs> BS. So I was very scared of Coach Askins. Do guys look at each other's? What dingling? You like try not to. You try not to. I mean, it's definitely bad it's form. In your face. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you mean guys who are in the locker and room do you like guys a student? Like give each other compliments, dude. Le- no, let me tell you. Like I remember seeing my friends, and I'm like, so Those many are people. Nice. So many people were traumatized, like in seventh grade, where it's like, we just had gym class. Now everybody's got to go take a group shower together. It's like, what? You gotta be kidding me. So you guys never like, hey, nice penis. I wore a bathing suit. <laughs> Did you? Like, I saw my yeah. friend's boobs once, we and had, I was like, those are nice. Really? You yeah. stay in touch? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but if you saw her, like, V, you wouldn't be like, hey, nice V. I mean, it never mm. went below the waist. Well, that's my point. I've seen Buzz's boobs. <laughs> <laughs> some some dudes would wear their underwear in the shower. They didn't bring an extra pair of underwear. So they would they just would, keep the wet underwear? They would keep the wet underwear in their in their <laughs> coat pocket for the rest of the day. Nico, did you do that? Whitey tidies, right? I just throw the underwear away or something. You just throw it away. <laughs> in a, your mom, why don't so you So you were in underwear? the shower actually with your underwear and Luckily, your mom probably I didn't have had to do to buy, it too much. Oh, really? It wasn't like the school wasn't four like times super, a week? No, nah, they weren't no, like super strict or anything. All right. So you guys change in front of each other? Who? Like guys and their friends, you guys change in front of No. Them? No, I mean, I don't. I've been in locker rooms for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just, you know, I like to be clothed when I have conversations with people. So, yeah, like the whole thing is sitting around and you're half naked and you're whipping the towel at your friends, but... That's just a that's a fantasy. That doesn't happen. <laughs> okay. Oscar in our app chat says, I once ghosted a girl because she told me she had an IUD, but I'm against drunk driving, so F that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the winner, right? Good one, Oscar. Yeah, a good one. It wasn't a contest, but that was the winner. Uh Carlos is coming in. Oh, good. good. Yeah, oh, on his so way. We he, should break, you uh, guys, so we have time with him. Oh, but Nico's having so much fun. Shut up, Nico. Here we go. It's time for your late night roundup. Joanna puts this together for us. Recap and funniest moments, highlights from late night television. Here we go. Country singer Jelly Roll has announced that he quit the social media platform X and called it the, quote, most toxic negative app to exist ever, which is also a way better name than X. <laughs> There are even reports that fast food chain Chick-fil-A is starting a streaming service. Not to be confused with Taco Bell, which causes you to start streaming. (laughs) Denny's announced that they're closing 150 locations and no longer requiring all the restaurants to be open 24-7. Customers heard and were like, well, I guess I'll be taking my parking lot murders elsewhere. (laughs) Good day to you, sir. The airport in New Zealand recently posted a sign To limit the amount of time for curbside drop-offs that says, quote, max hug time, three minutes, while Newark Airport posted a sign that says, please bang when you get home. Artist interview, Zoom Music.
Music Discoveries. Celebrating artists' birthdays. Commemorating releases. Champion of all things rock. To Texas Roadhouse, 40 Gateway East, across from the Sierra Vista Mall, and 1499 Lee Trevino. Let us be your soundtrack to fall while you're cruising around in your turtleneck with your pumpkin spice looking for a spirit Halloween and putting up Christmas decorations. You can take us anywhere. Did you hear? Summer's already over. Welcome to fall from the Buzz Adams Morning Show. You remember this one, Joanna? We got new bumper music in today. Yeah, what's going on with you? Linsa. Every, Every single, single one of us to the devil. Didn't he? Isn't this guy that died of autoerotic? Association? Michael Is that Hutchinson. What he died of? Yep. David Carradine? No, David no, Carradine no, no, too. No. He did it before David Carradine. Yeah, yeah. Michael. Oh, this guy did it way before. Like, nobody knew what autoerotic association oh. was when this guy did it. You, oh, right. When, when they were talking about Michael Hutchins, auto, they'd have to explain the terminology. What it was. Yeah. What it was. Like, what? Exactly. That's what he died of? Yeah, he had the devil inside of him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Devil's inside that closet. Listen, listen, listen to the song. <laughs> he didn't hide it. <laughs> uh, Carlos Mencia is here, everybody. Woo! Our great friend for many years and a fantastic uh, comic who's doing a, a very special show here this weekend in El Paso with uh, shows starting tonight. Two very special things. Yeah, you guys are special to oh, me. So number God, one, thank you. my thank flight, you. my flight got canceled last night. And that wasn't the problem because it was at 7 and I would have been able to catch a different flight because it's LAX. There's a couple of, you know what I mean? Different ways to get there. But by the time they told us to get off the plane, Mm -hmm. it was already past any. Oh, you no way out. Correct. So then they rescheduled it for 6 a.m., which gets here at 9 a.m. Right. And I was like, so that's why we were. I go, 9 a.m. is not good. So. I was like, I got to get there earlier. So I flew into, I took a red eye to Dallas and Dallas to here and then came here. That's number one. But number two, I have a residency now in Vegas and every Sunday and Monday throughout the year and through 2025, I'm at Harris Casino mm-hmm. hey. except for this Sunday. Because last time I was here, Bar was like, hey, let's do Sunday. And I was like, yeah. And I wasn't going to cancel. So you're not do- you can't do Sunday this week. Not in Vegas. I'm doing it here. Doing it oh, here. you're not doing Harris. That's this, my point. Okay, I'm doing Monday. It. I'm doing Monday. That's just how on much Sunday. he loves El Paso. That's how I couldn't cancel. They asked me to cancel and I couldn't. Harris is one of like the the really original, like one of the old ones on the strip. It's, right? yeah, yeah, it's right across the street from uh, from Caesars. It's where Donnie, dude. I perform in the same theater that Donny Osmond performs. Oh, you see it him? Is so weird, bro. Did you grow up I, watching? I did. I met him and I told him, please don't watch my. <laughs> please. <laughs> He's like, why? I'm like, you like me right now. <laughs> I, I like this dynamic. I'm telling you, bro. Because I remember I'll say this. Marie still looks great. I see her on he those does commercials. Too? Bro, yeah, he does. You know, he looks I, great. I saw him on something. Yeah, yeah he, they, they both look great. Like, I guess being Mormon does something to your skin. I don't know, bro. <laughs> Soaking must be good for the soul. <laughs> we we have a call here. I want to play it because I was stunned when I heard this call earlier today, and I had to check it out. And it sounded like one of those where it's like, it sounded fakey. It sounded fakey, but I checked it out and, uh, well, listen. Good morning, morning show. Hey, Joanna, uh, just a quick question. Did, did you hear about that Jamie Foxx thing where it says that he was recording at one of P. Diddy's, P. Diddy's free cops, and then because they asked him to stop recording and he didn't, they drugged him and then they beat his ass, and that's why he was in the hospital, I think this year or last year? Uh, I don't know. I, jo- Joanna, look up. Oh when was God. when was uh, Jamie Foxx? Oh, I love Jamie Foxx. I think he's one of the most talented men on the planet. Amazing. Uh, when was his health scare? Was it okay. was it earlier this year? I, heard the, I barely saw the TikToks about it yesterday, and I heard the interview about it. But I wanted to come to a reliable source about <laughs> it. Maybe you would have it on the cheese man or something. All right. I am looking this up, and I did earlier when I listened to this and call it looks for real? the first time. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's being reported uh, widely. Jamie wow. Foxx shares more details, and they are kind of what he described there. I don't see anything about a beatdown. Jamie Foxx was on the, uh, was it Rick Smiley? Is that, is that Ricky the, Smiley? Ricky Smiley, yeah. He was on the Ricky Smiley show. Uh, he said, mm-hmm. Yeah, Jamie Foxx was hospitalized in April of last year. 
Jamie Foxx's parties were cool, though. Like, I, I've been to a few of his parties. They're, they're fun. They're not psychotic crazy. They weren't freak-offs. No, they were not freak-offs. Apparently, freak -offs. This, uh, from last year, Jamie Foxx was named among the VIPs who had been to one of those uh, freak, freak outs or freak offs? Freak offs, I think. I think it's freak off. Oh, man. They did not, that was not a well written story. It might have been a reputable source, but it just wasn't well written. Uh, in his upcoming Netflix comedy special, Carlos. Yes. Jamie Foxx makes the starting claim that Diddy was behind the stroke he suffered a year ago. Wow. Uh, he's filming. Diddy was responsible for my stroke. Now, well, so I guess everybody what, in the crowd laughed because it's they, a joke. They thought it was, and then, well, no, they it, thought it was a joke. And then he pauses, supposedly, yeah. and makes clear that, no, this was not a joke. Fox alleges that he was drugged by Diddy. While this may sound like part of the comedy, Fox's delivery quickly changed the room's energy. <sighs> Fox paused and gave a serious look to one fan in particular, making it clear he wasn't kidding. Fox, I'm just going to read from the article. Fox and Diddy were once close friends known for their extravagant parties. But their friendship soured over a failed business deal. The two men haven't been seen together in recent years. They're no longer friends, according to the report. He did not delve into the specifics. or But he did say that Diddy poisoned him. What? Yeah. Or oh what God. are the chances this could just be for the special? Ah. <sighs> Too. I don't that, know. That, that would be, I mean, to, to say something like this about such a such yeah. an important case and the dude's in jail, well, I he, think, you, uh, yeah, I think you. I know this about feds. Feds don't, feds are not like cops or sheriffs. Right. They, they don't arrest you under maybes, possibles. They, they have a 95% rate of, of conviction. When they take you in. They have the evidence. They got something. They have the evidence on this guy. Now, my son, when he was a kid, was really good friends with his two twin daughters. And he used to go to, I used to drop them off and take them to Diddy's house all the time. Really? Yeah. When, when oh, they were Diddy's, kids. Diddy's daughters. Yeah. So my son used to hang out with Diddy's daughters at their house. Isn't there, and I don't want to get into the nitty gritty details, aren't there some allegations that that Diddy involved his daughters when they were underage for yes, some of this? Yes, yes. And I told my son, you were involved too. And he said, I don't think so, Dad. I said, no, you forgot. You're involved. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, you're involved. Oh, we're, yes. We're talking huge oh, yes. sums of money. Oh, yes. He did this. Oh, yeah. My son. Go, did, yeah, he, did yeah. he? Yes, he did. Yes. <laughs> now, my son doesn't remember, but it happened. I'm telling you. Called repressed He memory. was drugged and repressed memories. Oh, yes. It's happened. And 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 listen, and they just gave out like a six hundred million in Los Angeles specifically. They gave out uh, six hundred million. Uh, the church did, and my kid is a Catholic who's been going to church the whole time, so <laughs> he's gonna get some. Well, I'm, I'm gonna get paid one way or the other. I'm telling you that much. Either Diddy or the church is gonna give me a lot of money for my son. <laughs> Poor kid. <laughs> <laughs> so, so wait. So, were you surprised when you heard the news come out about Diddy? No. Okay. I was. I was at a party one time where I was told, "Do not stay here after one o'clock." Damn. And I think it started as early as one in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder they needed so much baby oil. It was. Uh, yeah. I, and and here's the thing. It was like, dude. You got to leave before one. And I looked at the guy who said that, and I'm like, I literally challenge you right now to say something that's literally not going to make me want to stay longer after you said that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Th That would make you want to stay. Exactly. And then what he you said is like, here after one I got to stay. And then after one o'clock, I was like, okay, this is not, this Why? is crazy. What happened? What'd you see? It was just, it. there, there was no... Was there a, a noticeable noticeable change in the vibe you know what place. it was well, let me put it to you this way i can make it radio friendly i'm okay with orgies <laughs> i'm just not okay with having to wash my back you know what i'm saying <laughs> not okay with that i'm not okay with that it was one of those not okay with that like you know what i mean like Dogs you can't just, you gotta talk to me homie yeah. you gotta 
you got to warn the yeah, no, no, right. You can't saying? just come yeah. up and assume no, no, that no, no, I mean no, 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 but, no. But, no, but everybody was okay with it. You don't want to have to watch your back. I think, <laughs> I'm going to watch my back, dog. I think I just had a realization. I've gotten a couple of calls or emails or whatever over the past couple of weeks because I have always been like, you got to be careful with the conspiracy theories. You know? Sure, sure. And I got, so some of these guys is like, looks like us conspiracy theorists aren't so crazy. And I didn't know what they were referring to. It's probably the Diddy stuff. Now, but you guys were saying it was Oprah and Tom Hanks. You weren't even saying Diddy. Like with the pizza Right, stuff. right. Or, no, 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 no. This does not count. Nobody, no, people Diddy. spread more rumors about Beyonce than they ever did about Diddy. Nobody brought Diddy up. Nobody knew. Nobody right. was saying so anything. If you, in response to those that I was just like, I was kind of baffled as to what they were talking about. I guess about. the conspiracy theorists aren't always yeah. wrong, yeah. huh? Wait a minute. You guys didn't call Diddy. You right. don't get to take credit for that right. one. You were calling out Tom oh, Hanks of all people. The Tom National Hanks. Treasure. Yeah. Tom Hanks. Well, but that's, but that's right. also not a conspiracy theory. It's like it... He was having parties. Like, that's not a conspiracy. Uh, Diddy. Yeah, and everybody knew he just had... Okay. He just had stuff on everybody. He did those white parties where everybody wore white. Right. Didn't all that white clothes get ruined? I, I, I would imagine get, so. What happens when you put that much baby oil on white clothing? <laughs> like I said, bro. Oil stains. I, I didn't you, stay. You got to have one. Yes. Because, like I said, that, that, that when I saw people that I know that I can't talk about, I can't <sighs> say their names. Just, Initials. Just not even, just mm. not even what? look. Bro. Not even looking back. Do you know what I'm saying? No. What like, do you mean? Not, like, just getting approached by a dude while they're doing something. Not yeah. even looking back. Like, just, not hey, even worried it's about it. whoever's back there, it's all they good. They put their hand on your that shoulder. Kind of a thing. Like, yeah. hi. Yeah. Not your kind of party. <laughs> no! <laughs> right. No! You got to warn me. Yeah. You shouldn't have to know self Now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I've been known to visit Juarez every once in a while. But it's very protected, and I, I know my driver, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's all good. You know what I mean? It's not just some dude that comes up and is like, yeah, that that right, was but weird. was that a dude that we would recognize if we saw if we saw him? There were more than one dude you would recognize if you saw him. Uh, 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 wow. And it was, uh, like I said... I've done Caligula orgies. Right. <laughs> you're, not, right? you're not a shy person. Ten dude on 30 chicks. <laughs> We've done that. Okay. Wow. Okay. With Dr. Ramon Vasquez <laughs> from South Florida. You can check him out. I, I can talk about that because those are real. What, what is he? A, uh, he's, he's a an, doctor. He's he a can, real doctor. He, and he practices medicine. And 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 is he like a fear and loathing in Las Vegas time? No, no. He's just a real doctor and you okay. can check him out. Like my point is, Dr. Ramon Vasquez, you can check him out. But no, yeah. And he, yeah, he, he gave me this shot where you can do any drug. And still maintain. Like, it doesn't matter oh, what you do. Oh, the pee shot. It doesn't matter what you do. Doesn't matter what oh. drugs you do. Doesn't do you matter what it is. Do this name of this <laughs> like drug? Place. I was rolling balls. Are you <laughs> serious? <laughs> it sounds like somebody was rolling your balls. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, from the front. From the mean, front. Like, <laughs> which is the important <laughs> part. <laughs> very important <laughs> part. I Nobody know. was sneaking in across the border. <laughs> If you're a coyote, you got to tell me this. All right, I'll shut up. Let's take a break. We got another segment. With, okay, okay, okay. Uh, we got another segment with Carlos okay. who's in town all weekend, even Sunday this week. Uh, more coming up. While you're working away, we're working for you. Our for your property, your family's safety, and your peace of mind. Doppler Dave Spielman, the Borderlands Chief Meteorologist. Live from the KLAQ studios, the Buzz Adams Morning Show. Courtesy of Glasheen, Vias, and Enderman Personal Injury Lawyers. At GVILaw.com. All right, just, I just want to stress this again. Everybody who has been telling me... Oh, conspiracy theorists have been proven right because of P. Diddy. Nobody was calling P. Diddy. You guys were doing crazy stuff like Tom Hanks was yeah. sacrificing children in the basement of a pizza place. Yeah. Come on. It was, at, and Hillary Clinton yeah. was, Hillary Clinton was the one that was selling the kids. Right. Not P. Diddy. All of this could turn out to be true about P. Diddy? Yeah. He would keep people there against their will? 
I mean, yeah. going to an orgy is not illegal if you're no. a consenting adult and you Correct. haven't been... And when I say haven't been drugged, it sounds like everybody was drugging themselves at a lot of these things. Yeah, there was a lot of that. But that that I did see a lot of. Jamie Foxx is saying, yeah, he was, P. Diddy drugged him because he was filming and didn't want to turn it off. Again, this is a fair, this is fairly new reporting, but I found an article from October 20th. So Sunday, celebrity bodyguard alleges Diddy poisoned Jamie Foxx. Quote, Fox reported Diddy to the FBI because... Damn. So there's a lot of stuff here that I, I've got to say is compelling that this, you know, and I haven't been following the reporting right. as closely this morning, but... <laughs> I know, right? It sounds like... But I don't understand any of this stuff. Do you think like, Diddy and Epstein ever crossed paths? Hell like, yes. Do you think they, they... Hey, I've heard about your freak-offs. Right. They had to have, right? That couldn't be... That, that couldn't you know, have I, stayed a racial thing. I got an island over here. Right. Well, I mean, some of the other names that have come up... Right. You know, are, right. are, are celebrities of of right. both, both races. Or right. It's all three multiple races. Right. You know, That's what like, I'm saying. It doesn't seem like there was a lot of discrimination. Right, right, right. And it seems like everything was pretty gender fluid at these parties. From what that I'm it was, my friend. <laughs> that it was. <laughs> that it was, my friend. The party that I went to, anyway. Uh, <laughs> that I stayed at too long for a little bit. <laughs> Not too hey, long. Uh, Carlos, people are asking in our app chat, when are you going to go back to Vegas and how many shows are you having here? I am in Vegas every weekend. Every single weekend. Every Sunday and Monday. At Harrah's. You yeah. and Donnie. Every Sunday and Monday. And how many shows do we have this week? This weekend? This weekend, only Monday because I'm here Sunday and I wouldn't cancel. Okay. That's right. it. But in El Paso, tonight. Tonight Friday, through Sunday. Tonight through so Sunday. So we're doing a Sunday show this time. Yeah. Two on Saturday. Two Saturday. I'm not uh, going to do three on Saturday because I added a Sunday show. So there you go. I know that you've said I'm not going to do a third show and you've ended up. Yeah, but I added a show on Sunday. You know oh, what? Wait, so wait, do you see it. what I'm saying? It's like the third show on Saturday. Do you mind three shows? Because three shows can be a lot in one day. I do not. But here's why I stopped doing three shows mostly. Because by the time the third show comes around, I don't want to do a similar type of set. So then it becomes just a bunch of sex shows. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? All right, you've already because I've already done it once, and then I flipped it around and did it a little different. And then by the third one, I'm like, ah, oh, let me talk about BJ's. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, let's just go something easy. Don't make me work for this. Okay, uh, so Nico called me up yesterday. He's taking a like a, a comedy class. I just finished. Yeah, just finished cool. the comedy uh, Barry class. Barry Neal from Entertainment. Okay, and. He, what what's that, Joanna? He graduated. He said yeah. that was the last class. Was and like, he's like, "Did you learn uh, anything?" The guy told me, "Don't do so many <laughs> jokes." Oh, is that what he said? <laughs> uh, one day I was uh, uh, caught off guard when he asked me to do. And you know what? This is like on Zoom, so it's kind of sure, a, it's sure. never like a sure. uh, pristine environment. Is it one and one? You know, you have a friend who's really good comedian who could have helped you out and not charged you a thing. I know, but you're a busy person all the time. This is true, but you're an idiot. You know that, right? Okay. <laughs> You could have just... Yeah, but this guy that he took the class come could, from could possibly open a few doors for him. Well, I mean, Carlos could, of course, yeah, of open course, doors for me, too. Uh, absolutely. Uh, just because he owns the booking company that I'm already getting booked on, I took the class. To Good get, for you. But, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm never, I'm, I see why you did it. All right, I love right. learning stuff. I've are never you, down are, to not did, learn. Did you learn anything from it? Yeah, actually, you know, I, I did. Tell, tell, me what, tell me something that you learned that you're like, man, that was, that was changing, life-changing comedically speaking. You know, I think I have gotten pigeonholed into being an opener and host a lot. And right. so for me, I think it took uh, the class to really understand that when I don't do that, to not take any of the the hosting things that you do. The gimme, like the, hey, what's up? Da, 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 to oh, just God. go into jokes and... I would have told you that, like, for free, bro. That's, a, that's easy. Yeah, I, I, can, I can play a couple of calls, Joanna. The topic, Joanna was very interested in this. What meat, was that? Meat what? watching. Meat yeah. watchers. What is that? Oh, because uh, there, there's new rules for the NBA locker rooms and the reporters because a lot of the players are complaining. Yeah. The reporters. Right. Some of the male just... reporters are extremely awkward and are, like, checking them out. Like checking out the guys. Mm -hmm. Just watching their dongs. You know, well, so they're not they're not concerned with the girls looking, only the guys. Because <laughs> there are a lot of female reporters. I, I remember that in that the rooms was, now. That was controversial, I guess, for for a minute when they let women in the locker room. Right. And, you know, I think they made jokes about it on sitcoms and sure, stuff. Sure, sure. Uh, I always thought, well, they're they're professional journalists. Exactly. Right? Why shouldn't they be in there? Yeah, I agree. Uh, so anyway, we were talking about about meat watchers. So we got a lot of calls, <laughs> Joanna. It's like wait, because you were so into it. Uh, I wasn't into it. I was just saying that's You said you would have liked to have been in that room when Matt Kemp was giving that interview. 
Is that is I that? I told who you that in confidence. You said it on the air. Oh, uh, Steve. Hey, uh, Diana, to answer your question, yes, we sometimes look at the meat, but only when it's unavoidable. <laughs> For example, the restrooms at the Sumble, or no, the Coliseum. I don't remember which one has those tub restrooms, but the urinal is a big tub, and both you you just look because you just kind of have to look at your own thing and you know. <laughs> hanging strong, you know, because you can't avoid it. But you're not there going like, ah, mira que bonito pito, you know, like, no, you're not like that. I, I, you know, it's unavoidable. I but, think he's lying. Yeah, dude, those stories are a little tough, but. Okay. No, that's what I was asking about. Do you guys look at each other? I, I do not. I have never, ever felt the urge. To take a peek. To take a no. peek no. at a trough at Dodger Stadium. Nico. I, Ever admitted this morning that in school, when they had to take showers after gym, mm -hmm. he would just wear his underwear in the shower and I was then always throw them in like, the trash. I was always like the one that was... <laughs> yeah? yeah? I was like super awkward. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wasn't going to take showers with the like, dudes I was like friends with. <laughs> Yo, but... <laughs> Are you, are you ashamed of your... No, I'm not. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Carlos is trying to get into the psychology. Do you have an ugly penis or something? I'm, like, I'm just trying to figure out. Like, so if you can't love it, how do you... What's wrong with it? Had you I not thought hit it was puberty awkward. yet, maybe? My mom said to only let doctors see me naked. <laughs> <laughs> is that what your mom said? She did. Was she trying to keep you away from girls? I don't understand, bro. <laughs> Did you show a propensity for being gay and she was it freaking out at the time or it was, something? It what? was middle school. It wasn't high school. Right. Or okay, so I guess one of the insulted okay. conspiracy theorists is called in. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Because I said, hey, look, you guys are doing a victory lab, but nobody nobody predicted it was P. Diddy. I had are... never heard P. Diddy. Never. Not even you, during you the Epstein. I'm suspicious about you. There's all this conversation about P. Diddy and uh, the Epstein list and all that, the, these conspiracies. Every time you talk about them, you always dismiss them. Yeah, because they're 99.9% wrong. Wrong. That's why. Always dismiss them. You never give it like the chance to even think of it. The, it's possible. Hi possible. Highly possible. If you make a claim like that, you got to provide some evidence, mm -hmm. you know? And apparently, they provide enough evidence that the FBI <laughs> yeah. went after, <laughs> went after <laughs> P. Got, Getty. Yep. He's done. Sasha Baron Cohen when he found the evidence. When he found the, uh, that list over there in Nevada and us. Wait, wait, wait a minute, dude. What? Like Sasha Baron Cohen when he found the, uh, the, the list over there in Nevada and all that stuff. I don't understand. Sasha Baron Cohen found the list with Nirvana. With Nirvana? That's, That's what, what it, it sounded, sounded like. like. Every time you guys talk about you in particular, man, you, you, you either get paid by the media because you're part of the media tonight. <laughs> You're getting paid by the media, bro. Uh, yeah, I work in media, so I guess that's technically uh, people, true. People will tell, like, and by, I, wait, by the way, I this am is, a part of the big cover up to this genius. But that's not even it. The media is actually making money from the story, not the other way around. The story doesn't make the, the, yeah. right. The story is actually giving them stuff to talk about. It's not the opposite. You know, like TMZ is running stories every ten minutes. Correct. So latest with P. Day. Correct. You, you either get paid by the media. I do. You're part of the media. To you're part of the, not say nothing and deflect the conversation and disinform the people, or you're in cahoots with the elites or something. <laughs> yes. You've been found out, bro. You've been found out, bus. Because I don't. I don't. Give a lot of credence to just random I don't conspiracy evidence free conspiracies. I don't believe in conspiracy oh, theories. I think it, it's hard for people to not believe that there is a, a, a cabal of people that are pulling the strings. Buzz just goes home and stays at his house afterwards. He doesn't <laughs> do crap after the show. God, I haven't been to a party in so long. Because yeah. yeah. the way you yeah. talk about it, it's a little weird, man. It's a little weird. Give me suspicious about you. <laughs> Hey, listen. Well, you deflected and this and that. Like, no, no, no. No. Okay. Does, does this guy make sense to anybody? No. No. No, dude. No. And I say this honestly, and I can say it now. Mental health counseling is good for people. Some people. Some people. Yeah. Everybody. You, you talk about it weird. Your little explanation you just gave earlier right now? No, I don't know. Yeah, just, nah, nah. It's kind of weird about you, man. Mm, I'm on to you, man. You kind of... Mm -hmm. Okay, what, what we're getting here is not one single coherent thought. What are you saying? But he's on to you. You're but part, I'm on to you. You're that's part of on to you, That's the conspiracy mentality, he's isn't on it? To you. Oh, now I've got this deeper hidden truth. I got a feeling, got and my feeling means more than the truth. Okay? Clinically speaking, when people share conspiracy theories, a little bit of dopamine drips into their body from their and brain, they get, and they it they makes them feel, they get a boost out of it. That's literally what it is. Right uh, now, he feels smarter than you.
and smarter than everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. That dude right now is going, I put him in his place, bro. <laughs> like, like, when I told him about baloney nirvana. Right? <laughs> uh, come back tomorrow? Yes, of okay, course. Carlos been seeing you tomorrow on the show, everybody. I'll come back early show. tomorrow. <laughs> oh, no worries. Uh, have a great one, everybody. We'll talk to you at 6 a.m. tomorrow. So long. You know what I think? I think you talk too much. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, man, we're done talking.